with Saudi ships at some point. There's no reason to think that's actually the case beyond Pentagon speculation, though Saudi Arabia, which is attacking Yemen right now, has made clear they won't allow any Iranian ships into Yemeni national waters. The US speculation is probably warrantless at this point anyhow, as they previously were hysterical about two Iranian ships, one of them a destroyer, being deployed to the region on an anti-piracy operation, but those ships did exactly what they said they were doing and never picked a fight with the Saudi Navy. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a mother and cannabis oil activist, Shona Banda, learned last month that the state of Kansas has yet to warm up to medical cannabis. After her young son defended the use of cannabis during a drug education lesson, school counselors reportedly called state authorities that detained the child and raided Shauna's home. Banda told investigative journalist Ben Swan, they pulled my son out of school at around 1.40 in the afternoon and interrogated him. I didn't believe you could get a warrant off something a child said in school. Police obtained a warrant and searched her home, finding two ounces of cannabis flowers and an ounce of cannabis oil. The family previously lived in Colorado, where recreational use of cannabis is legal. In Colorado, she successfully used cannabis oil to treat her Crohn's disease and has since been in support for its use. The cannabis found in her home could lead to felony charges, but none have yet been filed. Her son was taken away from her. A new custody hearing is set for Monday. She told told Ben Swan, My son and I did have the talk about how it's not okay to bring this up in Kansas because it's a different state than Colorado. She was explaining how she tried to keep her son from being too vocal, saying it's very confusing for a child. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports advocates for legalizing cannabis launched a petition campaign in Phoenix on Friday seeking a ballot measure that could make Arizona the fifth U.S. state to allow possession, cultivation, and consumption of small amounts of cannabis for recreational use. Supporters have until July of next year to obtain the signatures of 150,642 registered voters in the politically conservative state in order to get the initiative placed on the November 2016 ballot. Formal paperwork to kick off the drive was filed with the state on Friday. Following the lead of five other western states and the District of Columbia, the Arizona measure would legalize possession, cultivation, and private personal consumption of cannabis by adults for the sake of just getting high. Arizona is already one of 23 states plus the District of Columbia that allows cannabis for medical use. Cannabis remains classified as an illegal narcotic under federal law, although the Obama administration has taken the position of giving individual states leeway to carry out their own recreation use status. Under the Arizona proposal, adults 21 and older could ultimately purchase up to one ounce of cannabis through a state-licensed retail outlet. They would also be permitted to grow up to six plants at home without a license. Sales tax proceeds would be earmarked to cover regulation costs, public health, and education efforts. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Tallahassee Zoo, which faced a major budget crisis. Luckily, they were able to get both, keep guests and animals happy, and stay profitable. And that's thanks to the zoo's new director, Maxwell Jeffries. Happy to be here. Thank Good you. morning. Now, what's the most profitable part of the zoo? The elephants, the tigers? No, 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 no. The gift shop, okay? Food court. But now, the entire zoo is the gift shop. So you come to the zoo, you look around, you see something you like, make me an offer. I'm a businessman. I want to make people happy. <laughs> You're probably familiar with the old saying, 
don't feed the animals. Oh, right, of course. Okay, well, that's old-fashioned thinking. At our zoo, you can feed the animals. Anything you want? Anything you want. Oats, eggs, batteries, you name it. <laughs> and we also uh, invented a new tiered membership system. So for your standard membership, you go to the zoo, you get to see the animals. For your gold level membership, you get to pick any two animals, make them fight each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then with a platinum, you get one hour alone in the zoo. No wow. questions asked. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is the Onion News Network. Again, it's 855-450 free, and our Skype handle is lrn.fm. All you have to do is send a, a user request there. If you haven't done it before, you only have to do it once. And if you do that, uh, we'll sort of add you, and then you can call in and sound generally better. Skype is uh, that way. It uh, has good audio quality, but it can still drop in and out depending on, well, I don't know if you're downloading a movie or something like that. 855-450-3733. I've got good news, and I've got bad news. Um, it's all contained within the same article from usatoday.com. Apparently, the percentage of teens using e-cigarettes tripled from 2013 to 2014. Now, anytime you have a, the amount of people tripling, it's an incredible change in things. Um, this is according to a report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And I've said on this show that I just didn't think teens were going to we're going to take up this whole e-cigarette thing. Like, it just, it seemed too, uh, you know, too occupied by old white guys uh, for, you know, you, generally these things don't trickle down, they trickle up, right? Um, or, I don't know, you know, trickling doesn't really trickle up. Anyway, the, you know, cool doesn't tend to come down from middle-aged uh, white guys who are overweight. It tends to rise from, uh, you know, teenagers and college students and stuff like that. At least that's what I, uh, as I understand it. But it appears as though it's gone in the other direction in this case. And I never expected this to happen. I've said so on the air more than once. So let's go on with this article. I just want to get it out of the way that I was wrong on this topic. I just didn't believe it could happen. Two million teens, 13.4% of high school students, used e-cigarettes in 2014, up from 4.5% in 2013 and 1.5% in 2011. So we're seeing what I would call skyrocketing numbers. Among middle schoolers, e-cigarette use rose from 1.1% uh, in 2013 to 3.9% in 2014, representing about uh, half a million students, the report says. So, yeah, 4% of middle schoolers. It doesn't seem like we're talking an, epi an epidemic yet, but um, nonetheless, it's something to keep an eye on. About one in four teens uses tobacco in some form, from pipes to cigars to smokeless tobacco among high school students. I assume that uh, in includes e-cigarettes, even though e-cigarettes aren't really tobacco. They're uh, nicotine, but not tobacco. So anyway, 9.4% use a hookah and a tobacco pipe with a long tube that draws, uh, oh, I'm sorry, they're describing what a hookah is. It's a tobacco pipe that draws, uh, has a long tube that draws smoke through water. So I'm not really concerned with the hookah smokers either. Uh, you don't generally drag those things around with you. Uh, you know, it's not like a, you're sneaking out back by the dumpster to take a few tokes off the hookah. A uh, hookah is something that one does seated, seated, usually at a party or something like that. They, the hookah bars are springing up all over the country. And, uh, you know, I mean, I suppose it's something to do. It kind of dries my throat out, but, you know, whatever, to each, to each his own. Obviously, nobody likes to see teenagers using tobacco in any form, but having been an ex-smoker, uh, me personally, I used to uh, smoke cigars and inhale them uh, when cigarettes didn't become enough, apparently. Um, and I tried a hookah, and it never, even after I had quit smoking, it never gave me that I've got to start smoking feeling again. It's like an experience so entirely different than smoking a, a cigarette that it, you know, I just didn't want to do that. It's like, um, you know, just not the same at all. 
So anyway, high schoolers use e-cigarettes and hookahs more than conventional tobacco cigarettes, the CDC says. Now, that's the good news. The bad news is is that tobacco use um, is, you know, a quarter of teens are using some kind of tobacco. But the good news is is that they're not smoking cigarettes. And cigarettes are the real killers when it comes to tobacco. I wouldn't call any of it good news, but a decrease in the amount of people smoking cigarettes is, is, a, is very good news. So um, the CDC says among high school students, 9.2% smoked cigarettes in 2014. 9.2%. When I was in high school, it was about 20% of high schoolers smoked cigarettes. They had, uh, they had just discontinued the smoking area, the smoking room in my high school. And they were, um, you know, trying to get us to stop by, you know, rounding people up in the bathrooms and things like that. It was um, epically unsuccessful. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, it gave uh, the coaches something to do. Uh, through though, though e-cigarettes don't contain tobacco or create smoke, they usually contain addictive nicotine. And this is true, but it's kind of different. Having used all of these things myself, um, the experience of smoking, and, and you, you got to consider, right? Like if you haven't smoked cigarettes and you haven't used an e-cigarette, you don't know the difference. And I'm telling you there's a world of difference. An e-cigarette is much more like, um, it, it just it, it's more like the nicotine patch. It doesn't satisfy in the same way. It, it certainly fixes an oral fixation. Um, so you've got something to do and carry around with you and all those things that, uh, you know, people with habits might like. But it doesn't have the uh, the same effect as like, a you know, hitting a cigarette. Uh, that well, the, the, the big difference is what they call a throat hit. And when you smoke a cigarette, you got kind of this little hot burn thing in the back of the throat. And at some point or another in life, you begin to like it if you continue to smoke. Um and you get this big rush of to, um, of nicotine because the tobacco's burned and the nicotine's uh, you know right there being distributed. With the e-cigarette, it's it just kind of it, it's more of a drip. It, it you're never getting that oh yeah nicotine feeling. Um, a smoker gets nicotine and a non-smoker gets nicotine and they feel it immediately. Everybody feels it um, when you smoke a cigarette. It is a very quick distribution platform for nicotine. However. Uh, e-cigarettes not the not the same way by a long shot. I'm sure that there's somebody who uses e-cigarettes can explain it a little better than I can. The number is eight fifty five four fifty free, and generally a lot of people who use e-cigarettes uh, attribute them quitting smoking or diminishing the amount of smoking that they do to these devices. Now, um, nobody's going to say uh, nicotine's good for you, but there's like a hundred other carcinogens in a tobacco cigarette. And so we're talking about, you know, yeah, nicotine, it's certainly a carcinogen and it's, it's a poison and there's no doubt about it, but in and of itself, far less likely to give you the, the cancer and, and kill you off than just uh, a nicotine cigarette. Consider there haven't been a lot of studies done on uh, e-cigarettes at this point. So what I'm telling you isn't sort of scientific as much as just sort of uh, deductive. And so, you know, when you're already addicted to cigarettes, you're going to say to yourself, oh, yeah, um, well, I'll, I, I think I can take this risk. Whereas none of us want young people to begin uh, smoking e-cigarettes. I mean, that's not that's not what we're looking for. I think mostly we uh, I, I like the idea of e-cigarettes for ways for people to quit smoking. Because it's a world of different. Nicotine can harm uh, brain development in young people and get them addicted, according to the CDC. About 90% of smokers first tried cigarettes as teens. I certainly did. I don't smoke anymore, but, uh, you know, I've controlled enough of my life for long enough that I, I will not proud or pleased with it. Matthew Myers, president of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, called the report's finding stunning. He said, it is a welcome sign of progress against tobacco, which kills a half a million Americans every year. Though he's concerned about t teens using uh, nicotine in any form. But the guy from the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids is still glad that kids aren't smoking cigarettes. And many places in the United States, they're outlawing e-cigarettes in the same way they outlaw cigarettes. And, uh, you know, half of the reason for the outlawing cigarettes, as I understood it, was just sort of make to make life hard on smokers. 
so that they'll stop being smokers. Well, why do you want to make life hard on e-cigarette users? The use of the system is completely different. What you're doing when you make it so that people can't use e-cigarettes indoors is you are incentivizing smoking. Let me explain that statement. Smoking gives a very quick tobacco rush. E-cigarettes don't work that way. It's much slower. So telling somebody to go outside and smoke their e-cigarette for a half an hour or something like that, it's, you know, it's bad news. You're, you're really just incentivizing cigarette smoking. What do you think? 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. It's 855. This 
live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark and Derek J. Derek J. joining me, sitting in for the uh, inexplicably absent <laughs> Christopher Cantwell. Um, I guess uh, Ian is off someplace doing something. I'm not entirely sure what, but uh, you know, it's Bit- a l- Bitcoin meetup, Manchester Bitcoin oh, meetup. That's right. Yeah, well, it's the longest running Bitcoin meetup in the world. It's world, true. World, world, it's world. true. It's true. God bless them. We were doing one here for a little while, but it didn't seem to really, you know, pan out so much for that. 855 free. You can call in and talk about whatever you want. Have you ever had that bone to pick, that X to grind? We may be the place for you to do it. Nationally syndicated on more than 150 stations. You can get your voice heard on Free Talk Live. 855 You've probably seen one of these backup battery supplies. Um, oftentimes what you can do with it is, you know, charge your cell phone. These new uh, smartphones, they're good for about three hours if you're really rocking and using that thing. And you, so you need a backup ba- battery. Now, you can get an extended battery, but then your phone gets bigger. You can um, get a backup battery, and then you got to kind of, you know, carry it on a wire for a little while until it gets charged up or whatever. But there's something a bit different out there. It's called the Pocket Power Plus. And what's different about it is, is that you can plug all kinds of different devices into it. It's got, uh, it comes with its own pack, and you can plug in laptops and, uh, you know, of course, phones and a variety of different devices. And potentially, if they, uh, in, in some circumstances, it can jumpstart a car. It comes with little jump starters too. So if your uh, battery is low, then you, know, you can pop it right in there and make it work. I've seen it uh, do that on video, and it's pretty impressive. You can get this, and and it's this is better than regular battery technology because they're able to to sort of make it it smaller. Um, Ian knows the term, but I guess they've uh, some different battery technology that's better in the Pocket Power Plus than um, other other ones. You can go to PocketPowerPlus9.com and get it for half price. So, you know, right here on Free Talk Live, we're offering a 50% discount off of this, you know, the, 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 the best in battery technology today that you can get. This is great, by the way, if you just want to go off the grid for a little while. Um, you, need, you need backup battery power. PocketPowerPlus9.com. If you use coupon code FTL there, you'll, you'll save even more. That's FTL is in Free Talk Live. Go to PocketPowerPlus9.com. It's PocketPowerPlus9.com. Use coupon code FTL. Do it now. Thank you so much. 855 free So, Derek J., let me bring you up to speed. Uh, there's a USA Today article I was reading about teens using tobacco. Yeah. And when I was in school... It was basically cigarettes. That's all kids smoked. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you you were a little later. They were probably smoking uh, cigars, black and milds, backwoods. Yeah, uh, yeah, things like that. But kids smoked cigarettes when I was in school. That's what yeah, that's what you did to be cool. And about twenty percent, as I recall, of uh, young people at the time were smoking cigarettes. We even had a smoking room in the high school. Now they had shut it down just before. I had come in to school, but there had been a smoking room at my high school, so these weren't that uncommon. Was it the- just for seniors, or was it for anybody? I don't know what the rules were. I had heard about those, but I heard it was for the older kids. You know, the young, the younger kids couldn't smoke. I I can't tell you the specifics, but I can tell you that the they just they still had smoking rooms. They were just unauthorized smoking rooms. I will bet your teachers' them- lounge did. <laughs> I bet it did. There was a smoking and a non-smoking teachers' lounge, as I recall. Oh, okay. And, and you I- smoked in the bathroom. I didn't. Did I smoke at school at all? I don't think I smoked at school at all. I did. I would sneak out to my car that was in the parking lot. Yeah. Um. I at some point or another ended up at the bad kids' school, and you could smoke there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you could just smoke there. At uh, they didn't have hallways. They had sort of breezeways, huh. and uh, that was fine there. They had. Did you say one in five of your peers smoked? That was the numbers from back then. Wow. So it's way higher than my experience. I'd probably put it at like one in twenty. Yeah, now they're saying 9.2% of uh, teens are using uh, cigarettes. Oh, wow. And that's a big drop. It's the first time that we've seen uh, here, uh, according to this, it represents a historic drop in cigarette use. The first time in history we've seen cigarette use in high school youth be low 10%, says Myers. This is Myers, the president of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. He's delighted by this report where it says e-cigarette use has tripled among the uh, high schoolers. So 
I'm kind of like I'm for one, I never expected high schoolers to take on e-cigarettes. I just didn't think that this technology was going to be exciting. Well, to them. It actually makes sense because, I mean, for me, I was struggling. I was using nicotine gum and stuff during school because you want to go out and have a cigarette. But, you know, you're in class. You can't just bounce out. It's not the easiest thing to play. I wasn't never addicted to cigarettes that oh, way okay. in high school. I smoked, but I just wasn't addicted to them. Yeah. Um, you know, it. It just, I just did it to because other kids did. Yeah, but if it were as easy as uh, smoking a vapor that you could have mm-hmm. in the bathroom, it wouldn't smell things up. You could probably even smoke this in class if the teachers turned the other way. Yeah, I can't imagine. Uh, I can't imagine the high school class where you could use an e-cigarette. But I'll bet you, you. Could oh do come it in on! Classes. I know I could have done it in high school. Okay, the teacher I, not noticing. As I as as long as as I understand it, you can sort of pull on these things and hold the vapor in your lungs until yeah. it sort of dissipates. Yeah. And then without blowing, and then blow it out, and then you know, there's nothing to blow out. Right. So it's different than smoke in that way. Yeah. It's also not stinky by any stretch. No, no, sometimes s- it smells great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like if it's really, th- if the the plume of vapor is very, very thick, you might get the whiff of like Kool Aid or something like that. Yeah. But it doesn't smell like you know, cigarettes. Cigarettes stink, and uh, it's a know. very clear distinction between cigarette smoke aroma and uh, the. Or I would call that odor and the vapor aroma. And, and Myers says at the same time, the explosive rise in e-cigarette use is a wake-up call. So Phil Damon, president of the e-cigarette industry group, the Smoke Free Alternatives Trade Association, agreed that the growing number of teens using e-cigarettes is very concerning. Well, wait a minute. Why isn't it not as dangerous? It's not bad for you. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Um, you are internalizing a nicotine, which is a poison. Um, and it's, but you're not internalizing all the other poisons that are in cigarettes. I would call, um, e-cigarette use leaps and bounds better than using cigarettes, but I wouldn't be delighted when somebody who didn't use any form decides, Hey, you know, I'll take this up. But another thing that's not getting mentioned here is, is that they have very low nicotine and no nicotine e-cigarette cartridges. Good point. So some kids may be just inhaling the plume of, uh, vapor. Right. And not actually using nicotine. One might ask oneself why you would want nicotine from your e-cigarette if you weren't addicted to it. Um, a buzz. You get a buzz there's, from there's it. There's not buzz from an e-cigarette. Well, your first time, if you're a high schooler and you I've enjoy used, some nicotine, you're going to get a buzz from that. I disagree. I have used an e-cigarette long after I quit smoking, so I should have gotten a buzz if I was going to yeah. get a buzz. Yeah. What I got was like a, head, a throbbing headache. Oh, um, no. And I would have to say that uh, e-cigarettes are bad for giving you huh. sort of that buzz. A cigarette is good for a sort of head rush buzz, yeah. but not an e-cigarette huh. uh, would be my contention okay. on, on that point. So Fair enough. I... I, I just maybe they're just using because if they say they use an e-cigarette, it doesn't mean that they actually have nicotine in it. Hmm. So I don't know. That's um, a good point. Yeah, now, one thing I'm curious about is the numbers on the whole. Are there more teens using tobacco in in whole because nicotine? because of the nicotine? Yeah, yeah, the nicotine. No, um, the number's still down. Any form good of tobacco use is still down. What are your thoughts on this? 855-450-3733. I also want to hear about using e-cigarettes indoors. I think you should be I think that there should be no problem with it. Of course a business owner can make that distinction if they wanted to. 855-450 free free talk live. So the news breaks, Hillary Clinton's running for president. My buddy Mark says to me, hey, didn't Hillary support the Brady Bill and the assault weapons ban? And I'm thinking, yeah, 1992 presidential campaign. Oh my God, a gun grabber in the White House. So at guns80.com, they've come up with the Hillary Clinton special. They just call it the Hillary. You even get two 30-round magazines for free, and it's only $474.95 for the whole kit. So get your AR-15 kit and tell Hillary, ha-ha, 844-2-GUNS-80. That's guns80.com. Avoid bankruptcy. Does credit card debt have you living paycheck to paycheck? Our attorneys at the Legal Center for Debt Resolution will find the absolute best debt reduction solution for you or you pay nothing. It's called pay for performance and you won't pay a dime until the job's done. That's right. No upfront fee, no monthly fees. Nada. You pay nothing until after your account is settled. If you owe ten, thirty, dollars or even $50,000 in credit card debt, call the Legal Center for Debt Resolution at 800-449-4269. 800-449-4269. Are you a sneezer? If you're not, 
can you get close to one? I don't literally mean someone sneezing. Sneezer, as defined by marketing guru Seth Godin, is an opinion leader. When a sneezer mentions something, other people catch what Godin calls the idea virus. Seth Godin says some people are more likely to tell their friends about a great new idea. So identifying and courting sneezers is a key success factor for idea merchants. His book, Unleashing the Idea Virus, is the most downloaded ebook in history, and you can download the whole book free. That's how he's making his idea contagious. Click tips, tricks, and other stuff to help you cut through the clutter at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Yeah, you know, just to work if there was no government and everything worked the right way. Communism requires central control. There's evidence that the free market works. The marketplace is what has created all of the wondrous things that we have and take for granted in this world. The marketplace is what brings us air conditioning, grocery stores, the internet, all the things that you enjoy, your cell phone, all the things you take for granted. That's not as a result of government. Government slows down and impedes the market. Government restricts freedom and it restricts the marketplace. So, you know, there's evidence that the freer a market is. Look at the computer industry, for instance. The more free and the less regulated a market is, the better the innovation, the better the competition, the better the prices, and the better the quality of the products and the services. I mean, we've got evidence to prove that our economic model is sound. And look at all the wealthy people that the computer industry has created. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind this evening. It's Mark with you. And Derek J. I want you to check out ProXPN.com. If you're online, you need to protect yourself. Your internet service provider is saving your surfing history. They'll turn it over to whatever government agency asks for it. Criminals are sniffing your Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the internet. ProXPN can solve all of those things. Simply download uh, an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android even Linux, and just connect to the Internet, and you're protected from all that stuff. All you need to do is uh, have your password stolen one time by some criminal who's gotten uh, through your uh, Wi-Fi security, and you'll understand how important this is. There will be no more prying and no more spying with ProXPN. One account works for all your devices. You don't have to have a separate account for each device. You just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use the promo code FTL50 and get 50% off of an annual account, and that goes on forever. Not just the first year, 50% off forever if you use coupon code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. With the premium account, which is what you'll be getting there, um, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers from all around the world, the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. If you do torrenting, you you need this because you really can't torrent without it. Uh, They'll hunt you down and give you all kinds of trouble, especially through your internet service provider. 
prexpn.com doesn't keep records of your online habits. You get all that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy that is priceless. proxpn.com slash FTL, FTL50. Let's go to Paul calling in from Portland. Paul, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I have figured out a way to uh, create a bunch of jobs, and it works like this. If we were to build solar-powered houses, each house with 100 solar panels, then uh, that would create jobs for carpenters and electricians and installers and all this. And then if you pass, each city passes a law that requires the local utility to pay the homeowner 99 cents a kilowatt hour for harvesting solar energy. Wait, hold, hold, 99 cents? It's like 15 cents a kilowatt hour here in uh in, in but the actual, right, but the actual cost of producing energy, whether it's solar or coal or anything, is actually 99 cents. Well, where's now, the other cost? Why would I Who's say subsidizing that? that? Well, here's how it works. Okay. Um, you, uh, the utility pays the 99 cents, and the utility sells the energy back to cities and smelting plants and uh, electric train systems and whoever needs it. And um, they developed this in Germany after the Chernobyl meltdown. And it seems to have worked really well over there. So one reporter, a television reporter, went out in Berlin and was asking tenants, only tenants, what do you think of having to pay a dollar a month more for your utility in order to subsidize these solar homeowners who are getting 99 cents. And this one guy says, well, I spend $20 a month on beer. Why would I mind spending $20 a year if we can shut down nukes and save the planet? And that that little one-minute snippet went viral all over Europe with this guy, you know, basically saying, you know, I spend that much on beer. Why would I mind spending that much on uh, solar? And so that's how it's subsidized. It's subsidized by everybody that uses it, pays a okay. dollar a month more or equivalent uh, based on how much they use. Let me ask you this. And the more you- when, you, when you pass these laws that require the, uh, the, the, the utility to pay this 99 cents and then, um, then everybody agrees, let's, or enough people agree that you can shove it down the other people's throat at least, that we should, uh, you know, yeah, this is a great idea. Solar is awesome. What does it do to the other alternative energy solutions out there? Doesn't that just sort of pick a winner? Solar is going to be it. I like solar power, but and I probably will get some um, uh, solar panels and do exactly as you say, sub, uh, send some power back to the utility. I probably won't get 99 cents a kilowatt hour when I do it, but I don't like the idea of picking winners. I'm also interested in what's going to happen with thorium reactors and, um, you know, on a, on a local level and where power could be well, what, generated closer to home. If you, if you look at Germany... Germany is really lucky because in the south they have a lot of sun, so they can uh, they have cities in Germany now. There's over 100 cities in Germany that are 100 percent solar powered, but in the north they have a lot of wind, especially at night. So their grid uh, is wind all day long and night long from the wind, and then they have thousands of little streams. I spent last summer in Germany. They have thousands of little streams all over Germany, and they have these little water generators that you can buy. They're about the size of a water heater. You put it next to your house, you run a hose over the street, and you run water through it, and it powers your house from hydro. And so uh, they've got it balanced over there. Does that affect uh, the fishies in any way? I mean, usually when doing hydro... No, because it... you're, just, you're just taking a small amount out with a pipe, running it through your little water wheel system. And then uh, I, I stayed in a, uh, a hostel in Freiburg, and they actually had this system where they had this small amount of water running underneath it and running a water wheel. And then uh, so Germany's got it balanced with wind, water and solar really well. Uh, they shut down um, all their uh, they banned all the fracking and they're shutting down all the nukes, as you probably know. And so they're going to probably be the first large industrial nation that is going to be totally alternative. They pay um, the rate changes. You're right. The rate changes based on if you have um, roof-mounted solar gets the highest rate. If you um, some wow. farmers are putting hundreds of solar panels out on their fields, and why, they get why a lower does roof-mounted rate. Get more because it actually is more expensive 
to install solar panels on the roof. So the, what? That's the, the labor system. theory of value. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's a that's ridiculous. It should be based on the amount of well, power just, you produce. I'm just telling you what's working in Germany. Well, Communism never works. I mean, this is what you're talking about is is a communist setup, and it's based entirely on the theory of economics portrayed by uh, Marx. And I'm I'm just can't be for that. This whole ninety nine. Let's subsidize. Well, think and, about this. Think about this. Right after the meltdown at Fukushima, the prime minister of Japan looked at the German system and said, "They've got it right. We're going to adopt." Politicians here. love but, socialism. It gives well, them whatever, the power. Works, the just plan, just because he said it doesn't make him right, Paul. And by the way, you know, I share your optimism here for renewable energy, but I'm not sure you're accurate about Germany's position here. I'm reading an article from The Economist uh, that I remembered seeing just a couple of months ago. This was published in December 2014. Headline, What Has Gone Wrong with Germany's Energy Policy? And the, what has gone well, wrong is that energy got too expensive because the government messed up the incentive structure for people to pay less for energy uh, that is produced closer to them. Well, if you read any article written in this country about what's going on in Germany, they always slam Germany because these articles are written by a group called ALEC. No, uh, the American Economist is not controlled by <laughs> ALEC. That is a bunch of left leftist propaganda. <laughs> Bullcrap. Well, well, no, it is not. It's that. Why are they attacking solar in this country when we're – it's inevitable. No, they're not attacking solar. solar. They're talking about how the incentives don't add up. When you force people to pay more than what they would normally pay for energy, uh, that's bad. I mean I, yeah. I, they, they get well, to use less counting, of it. They're not counting the external cost. Like what's the cost of polluting all the rivers Agreed. and the lake? Agreed. 100%. Air. Absolutely. Those people should anybody who's polluting should be held responsible for that stuff. And and big business and big energy has gotten a pass for way too long on those things. One hundred percent. But that doesn't mean that subsidizing one particular form of, of alternative energy is a good idea. Those are not two, two not the same ideas. Right. Well, no, it, it doesn't matter what type of energy you use. It still costs if you count all the costs. It still costs 99 cents a kilowatt hour. There's no way around it. You haven't proven that to me. Well, I don't. Yeah, I understand that. But this is the first time you've heard the argument. And there's a great book on it called The Solar Economy by Herman Shear. Very good. And you can Solar see Economy him. by Herman uh, Shear. Thank you so much. Appreciate the call, Paul. 855-453. What do you think? 855-450-3733. Subsidizing energy? Good idea. Free Talk Live, 855-453. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 877-345-7645. That's 877 877- 
1-800-345-7645. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately at 1-877-345-7645. That's 1-877-345-7645. one 345 7645 Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. Derek J sitting in here uh, just to grab you and pulled you into the studio to do a show. What Can you tell folks about your website? Yes, it is com, and I publish videos of what happens here in Keene. We do some pretty unique types of activism here. Uh, there's a local business uh, that's a thrift store. That's pretty average but then there's other things like people going to court over speeding tickets and parking tickets and you don't get to see inside the courtroom that often or um, people handing out pamphlets encouraging others not to take a plea deal uh, so there's a lot of different things people happening filming in the police people uh, going around and uh, keeping the uh, you know filling me the parking meters so that folks don't get tickets uh, yeah you know, those sorts of things you know and I keep a spotlight on what's going on here in Keene that makes it so unique and I think that's something that isn't happening in the rest of the world. So people can check it out at TheDerekJ.com. 855-450 free. Um, Paul, in the last segment, called in talking about uh, a subsidized solar energy plan where essentially the uh, power companies would be forced to buy energy from homeowners at 99 cents a kilowatt hour, and that would only cost everybody an extra dollar more in their electrical bill. And I just don't understand how it's 15 cents about a kilowatt hour here in New Hampshire and how you're going to uh, sextuple the amount that I pay per kilowatt hour and only cost me a dollar. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. However, something about last segment left me with an uneasy feeling in my stomach, and I think it's because neither of us really – we were both hacking at the branches on that mm -hmm. call, uh, talking about, oh, yeah, the consequences of this uh, action could be negative, and, but it's still hypothetical. 
I think the strike the root message here is Paul was suggesting that the government force people to pay a price that otherwise they wouldn't be paying, and that's wrong. It's true, but when the government gives a monopoly to an organization, like the power company, uh, then, as far as I'm concerned, whatever rules they put on that monopoly, really, they don't bother me much until they trickle down to the consumer. The problem is, is the monopoly on power distribution, the monopoly on power poles, the monopoly on the right of way. Those are the difficulties. If we could have uh, energy distribution on a local level, then we probably things would go a lot better. Government forces a monopoly to pay higher prices. Who do you think really pays for yeah, that? It's the customers. the customers. Let's go to David calling in from San Francisco. David, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, uh, yeah, I actually work with a nonprofit out here in San Francisco on energy issues. So there are so many different things that you were just talking about that um, are not accurate. Okay. Uh, Tell you me were just wrong. talking about forcing a monopoly. Now, those monopolies were not even allowed to exist uh, except by a government mandate. Right. They were given a certain charge. Uh, in, other, in other words, they didn't want 50 different stinking coal-powered plants competing against each other and rapidly uh, polluting the skies and then doing cost uh, uh, fluctuations that would just be devastating to an economy and everybody's health. So they allowed certain companies to become monopolies, but they had to provide a public service. And so they weren't even given a business license unless they were going to be actually serving the public instead of just taking the money and running. And uh, out here in California, well, about I don't, years Hold on. Ago, I don't understand that statement. Um, if I'm giving you money for electricity, it's not like you're taking the money and running, right? Oh, they do, and absolutely they do. And as recently as just a year or two ago, uh, the big nuclear power plant in San Luis, uh, or excuse me, San Onofre, they bought a steam generator that they knew would not fit. And within five months, it started creating so much vibration that it rattled apart about 30% of these tiny little pipes, and they started leaking radioactive water into the system. And it was an $800 million mistake. And as soon as it started happening, the head of the PUC, which is supposed to be an oversight agency who was corrupt as hell, uh, uh, started making deals to uh, to uh, give them about a two and a half billion dollar payback. So there's just utter corruption in the whole system. David, and do you I, think it would be uh, good if that company had competition? Oh, yes. And, uh, that, but again, it gets back to the idea of what you would call uh, the, the battle between maturity and technology. Because in the long run, you know, we've got corporations, we've got inventions, let's say, the invention of burning coal, right? Yep. Uh, burning a rock. Uh, that's not too complicated. What's the big deal about burning rocks? When how could it be that that our economy is so dependent upon burning, you know, old dinosaurs, liquid uh, oil? But but our economy is based upon very primitive science. And that guy talking about solar, I mean, he's dead on right. We have many, many, many more inventions that are coming out, but because old money is invested in the stupid ways, we can't. We're, our economy is locked into stupid things, and it can't move forward into others because old money will not allow it. Won't we and, be better you know, that libertarians have been fighting this for years. They, they claim to be small business, but I hear you basically still – protecting these big monopolies when you're when you're talking about we can't go to this we can't go to that oh, no not, all we i'm the saying people... is, is that every time the government gets involved and you've only reiterated this uh david um is, is that every time the government gets involved there's corruption and from top to bottom and that people are taking kickbacks and it's the good old boy network and all that stuff and i don't expect that to get any different when you start demanding 99 percent a kilo 99 cents a kilowatt hour for people to get paid back for their solar power why not just well, build your own solar a, setup and tell not, everybody to go take a long walk off of short piers what he was talking about with for example a 90 percent 
or excuse, 99 percent. It's 99 cents. Sense, yeah. uh, this is this is what happened in Japan. They knew after those nuclear power plants melted down, uh, which is going on four years ago, over four years ago now, that that they had to switch over, and they had to switch over fast. So they encouraged people to put solar panels on their roof, and rather than get Rather than getting the public dragged down into, you know, $40,000 on your roof that you'd get paid off in 20 years, no, we'll, we'll pay you a bonus for five years uh, of $0.99 cents a kilowatt hour if you just put them up there and get it going. And sure enough, it worked, and they haven't had to open up. They, they shut down every one of their nuclear power plants. And they haven't had to reopen them since because it worked so well. So this, is a, government Germany, subs- this is a government subsidy. It's not uh, forcing the uh, the power company to, to pay in. Look, no, it was forcing the power company because if you know TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Power, they are organized crime. There's just no way around it. They are the richest people in the world, and they are running that as organized crime. They, it, it, I could tell you stories that would shave your, scare the heck out of you because they are so criminal. They were taken just weeks ago. There was an example. They're taking like 14-year-old kids out there into fields uh, to sh- scrape the topsoil off. Now, these are supposed to be jobs that are, you know, for skilled people to take this radioactive topsoil out of this massive area. They're taking 14-year-old kids out there, stealing the money from them, yelling at them, refusing to give them dust masks and all of this sort of stuff. And this is being run by TEPCO. This is this is these people are organized crime. Well, they're murderers. Yeah. I mean, these are the they're, these are the people the government has allowed to have a monopoly. And you think that's going to no, get no, better? No, no, no. You gotta you gotta look at Japanese politics post World War II, and you realize that Yakuza didn't come to power because of some accident of Japan. It came to power because of organized crime in the U.S. military and old Douglas MacArthur and and a whole lot of really ugly corporate crimes that I'm, have gone on. In I'm interested Japanese in Japanese government. The Yakuza is very interesting to me, David, but you said you work in the power industry. Is that correct? No, no, no. I work with a nonprofit uh, called Abalone Alliance Safe Energy Clearinghouse. Oh. If you want to see our website, it's energy net.org. What is your concern about nuclear power? Well, it's it's totally phony. I mean it takes it takes a massive amount of water. It it they are not so? if, if it's going to take if it's going to take as long as a quarter of a million years to to make these uh, areas safe again who's putting together a budget for a quarter of a million years well, and if we're working ourselves into a hyperinflation state who's saving up a, a hyperinflation uh, a budget uh, to to deal with the costs of cleanup for a quarter of a million years pardon Nobody. my ignorance here david but i don't know what you're talking about what takes a quarter of a million years the the fuel rods, the the, the the radioactive waste can be hot for as long as a quarter of a million years. I think David's the right on this stuff, one. Uh, the fact the is, short the nuclear stuff power, could be forty thousand. Yeah, n- nuclear power is created to be weaponized, and that was the the whole purpose of it. However, these thorium reactors are melt meltdown proof, and uh, you know have a lot of promise. And that's why I don't like the idea of subsidizing one type of alternative energy and picking a winner. Generally, that doesn't work. Thank you for your call, David. I appreciate it. Eight fifty five four fifty free. It's eight five. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. It's the biggest flooring event of the year. Lumber Liquidator's 12th annual April sale with five days of unbelievable clearance deals from 29 cents. Don't miss once-in-a-lifetime prices on solid, pre-finished Bellawood domestic hardwood from an incredible 99 cents. Gorgeous hand-scraped Supreme Bamboo is just 179. Exotic hardwood laminate and more is up to 77% off. Plus, more deals added daily in your local store and 24-month special financing for beautiful, high-quality hardwood floors for less. Get to the April sale event today. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. 
LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $227. Antiwar.com reports, though Iranian state media hasn't mentioned the fact at all, U.S. military officials claim a naval convoy of between seven and nine Iranian ships is moving somewhere in the vicinity of Yemen. Details are scant, but officials said only some of the ships may have been armed and that they might be conceivably there to get into a fight with Saudi ships at some point. There's no reason to think that's actually the case beyond Pentagon speculation, though Saudi Arabia, which is attacking Yemen right now, has made clear they won't allow allow any Iranian ships into Yemeni national waters. The U.S. speculation is probably warrantless at this point anyhow, as they previously were hysterical about two Iranian ships, one of them a destroyer, being deployed to the region on an anti-piracy operation, but those ships did exactly what they said they were doing and never picked a fight with the Saudi Navy. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a mother and cannabis oil activist, Shona Banda, learned last month that the state of Kansas has yet to warm up to medical cannabis. After her young son defended the use of cannabis during a drug education lesson, school counselors reportedly called state authorities that detained the child and raided Shauna's home. Banda told investigative journalist Ben Swan, They pulled my son out of school at around 1.40 in the afternoon and interrogated him. I didn't believe you could get a warrant off something a child says in school. Police obtained a warrant and searched her home, finding two ounces of cannabis flowers and an ounce of cannabis oil. The family previously lived in Colorado, where recreational use of cannabis is legal. In Colorado, she successfully used cannabis oil to treat her Crohn's disease and has since been in support for its use. The cannabis found in her home could lead to felony charges, but none have yet been filed. Her son was taken away from her. A new custody hearing is set for Monday. She told Ben Swan, my son and I did have the talk about how it's not okay to bring this up in Kansas because it's a different state than Colorado. She was explaining how she tried to keep her son from being too vocal, saying it's very confusing for a child. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. 
Reuters reports advocates for legalizing cannabis launched a petition campaign in Phoenix on Friday seeking a ballot measure that could make Arizona the fifth U.S. state to allow possession, cultivation, and consumption of small amounts of cannabis for recreational use. Supporters have until July of next year to obtain the signatures of 150,642 registered voters in the politically conservative state in order to get the initiative placed on the November 2016 ballot. Formal paperwork to kick off the drive was filed with the state on Friday. Following the lead of five other western states and the District of Columbia, the Arizona measure would legalize possession, cultivation, and private personal consumption of cannabis by adults for the sake of just getting high. Arizona is already one of 23 states plus the District of Columbia that allows cannabis for medical use. Cannabis remains classified as an illegal narcotic under federal law, although the Obama administration has taken the position of giving individual states leeway to carry out their own recreational use status. Under the Arizona proposal, adults 21 and older could ultimately purchase up to one ounce of cannabis through a state-licensed retail outlet. They would also be permitted to grow up to six plants at home without a license. Sales tax proceeds would be earmarked to cover regulation costs, public health, and education efforts. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Nothing you do or say will ever reach the lofty heights attained by the following news summary. This is the Onion Week in Review. Facing increased market pressure and a shrinking bottom line, media company Star Trove was forced to lay off dozens of unskilled bloggers this week. Sources confirmed that before being dismissed, many of the bloggers had been with the company for months, regularly performing menial tasks such as describing celebrity outfits and composing quizzes about Disney characters. I mean, I've been with this company for almost a year. It wasn't the most rewarding job, and I didn't have health insurance, but it paid the bills. I'm already 25 years old. I just don't know where to go from here. In other news, a six-day visit to a rural African village completely changes a woman's Facebook profile picture. A new dating website helps plus-size Jewish plane crash survivors find love. And a kid figures he'll go down the slide 36 more times and then call it a day. This is the Onion News Network. on your mind. It looks like uh, alternative energy is on the table right now here on Free Talk Live. We had uh, some folks call in and I'm a big supporter of alternative energy. I love the idea of getting sort of away from the monopolies, the uh, the government intervention and all these things. What I can't really, what you know, bugs me, rubs me the wrong way is the subsidies. If the government decides that it's going to give you extra money for putting stuff up on your roof, then that money has to come from somewhere. Um, I don't know the specifics of these energy companies, but I would agree that big companies that have monopolies tend to provide bad customer service and have inflated pricing. That's how monopolies tend to go. Um, but I just think, you know, get, put the solar panels up and get out of there. Yeah, you know, give somebody a tax credit or tax break on it and, you know, make be done with it. The incentive for solar panels, in my view, should be independence. It's, it's just, oh, I'm more independent if I use solar panels. I can create my own energy, and I don't have to depend on someone else to provide it. Like you, I can power my own fridge or washing machine or whatever I need in my home. Do you see why they um, people would want to pump the extra energy back into the, the grid, though? During the day, you can produce more energy than you will use, and at night, you will use more energy than you can produce. Yeah, but so... Like, my dad looked into this, uh, getting solar panels on one of his houses, and he was told, basically, that he's not allowed unless he taps into the, the grid system. Like, he yeah, can't have his own. municipalities will have different rules. Well, I think that's ridiculous. So, and I don't know if this is uh, the case in most places, but th it seems not. like they want you to be in the grid. And what I think is, like, you should be able to be gridded with whoever you want. Maybe you just want to power your block. And get together with your neighbors and say, we've got windmills on our roofs, we've got solar panels, and this block is taken care of. Agreed. Let's go to Carl calling in from Atlantic City. Carl, you're on Free Talk Live. 
Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Here's what I post when these people come on like that. I'll say, do you have solar? And then the next thing I'll say, do you already pay higher electric rates because you can pick uh, electric companies that use green energy, hydro, solar, wind, and they they won't answer me. <laughs> now, no, they won't answer Well, because they want you to pay more, they want me to pay more, and yet they can do it right now and they won't do it. Of course. Now, the other thing, right? Now, the other thing is I do have solar. I have to be connected to the grid in New Jersey. Don't pay me $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour for each uh, kilowatt I overproduce. That makes okay, some sense to me. $0.08 cents a kilowatt hour. Right. Okay. Right. Now, uh, off the grid, I mean, on the grid, I think it's roughly $0.13 cents per kilowatt hour I got to pay. Yeah. Okay. I don't have it on my roof because I didn't want it on my roof. I have it on the ground. And it was expensive, it, um, almost $69,000. dollars was a lot of money. So why'd you do it? One, uh, well, I, I, wanted, uh, I wanted not to have an electric bill. Yep. Okay? And I get it. I think it's a 20% subsidy from the federal government to 2016. And believe me, I'm going to use every cent of that. And then there's a thing called S-Rex. Is S-Rex, that a tax credit? Tax. Or is that a... Yes. The tax credit. So that's not you getting money from the federal government. It's you not having to pay money to the federal government, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. And I'm going to use every cent of it. <laughs> I made sure of that. Now, the other thing is there's things called SREX. For every 1,000 kilowatt hours you produce, you get an amount. But it, it, it fluctuates because polluting companies have to buy them SREXs. Right now, I think they're about, uh, I think, $180 for uh, an SREX, okay? And it, it, I've seen as low as sixty dollars for an extra. I, I don't follow X-ray. what what's what is it? You said po- polluting companies have to buy it. Yes, they have it? to buy them Srexes. What is well, an it's, a, it, it's when you produce a thousand kilowatts of electric, uh, even though you're using it for yourself. These polluting companies have to buy them Srexes, but that amount they pay floats. It could be. Is I've it seen as low as kind of like a carbon dollars. credit? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. And and uh, I think I'm down. I've, I've been August be four years. I've had this system in, and I think I've got it paid down. So are to, you? I think about now that you've had it in four 000. years. Are you like yeah. I should have never spent this sixty nine grand? Or are you like yes, this was a great thing to do, and I I love the independence it affords me. Which one do you feel? Well, I I, I wonder because I'm almost sixty five. Will I live long enough for to pay it off? I mean, I, I I had the money, I paid for it, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not me. Maybe the people that inherit my house will. You know. Yeah. But it. I get right, the same feeling. But, uh, I've just right, painted some. Much- I, I just planted some uh, maple sugar maples, uh, and I probably will okay. not be getting a lot of uh, maple syrup out of those particular trees because they've got to mature. I get the idea. Right. Appreciate the call, Carl. Thanks okay. So much. Thank you. Bye bye. 855 450 free. There's somebody who's done it for themselves, and yeah. that's always very important. Let's go to Robert calling in from Bellows Falls, Vermont, right across the river. Robert, you're on Free Talk Live. I I, uh, I don't know as much as those last two guys that were on, you know, talking about real power and stuff like that, but I, I like the setup that we have over here in Vermont. Uh, you know, we have solar panels over here, we have wind turbines. We uh, have uh, hydroelectric power. Uh, you know, the, uh, some of the major farms, like up towards the North Kingdom, uh, they, they, you know, these are dairy farms now. They run on, you know, on cow manure. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, producing the hydroelectric, the, the, uh, the uh, nuclear GM or nuclear plant over in Newfan, they closed that down this year, I believe it was. What was it last year? I can't remember. And on top of all of this, uh, as far as I know, uh, Burlington, Vermont, is the only town in the whole wide world that has gone completely off the grid. I, I believe it was 10 or, or 12 or 14 hours. I can't remember. It was in the paper. They, they did it for tw- 12 hours? Yes. Okay. 
Here's what I don't understand about New England. This has to be the wettest place uh, in America, and for some reason we don't have more hydropower. The water water just runs down the mountain I live on. It's passing me by. There's people in California, uh, practically, um, you know, they're, <laughs> they're 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 good. They've got all kinds of restrictions and stuff, and. I've got all the extra water that we could possibly. And nobody, there's no dam anywhere, um, and nobody's using this power. It just, uh, it, it, it's phenomenal. Why this do you think that is? This is kinetic energy. I have no clue. Really, I have no oh, you clue. Could make, you could make your own, you know, hydroelectric energy. Like I could do it on my property. I have the Saxon River that butts right up to my property. You know, and it's a good, you know. 20, 30, maybe 40 feet wide. It's easy to get you know, into maybe, solar. You know, like you can just go out there, buy a few panels, uh, hook some stuff up, and you're 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 producing uh, energy off the sun. I never, I haven't seen that many good uh, setups with like a water wheel or something like that. Something that wouldn't disturb the fishies. I don't want to go and uh, you know disturb breeding patterns or anything like that. That wouldn't be my goal. So I wouldn't want to dam the whole thing up. But uh, you know th- why not? Why not water wheels? Why don't we have these things anymore? They worked fine with mills for a long time. Right, right. Well, I don't know. I, I do know that there are some hydroelectric dams that are in Vermont. But I like the idea, like I said, that you know some of these dairy farms are, are producing power using you know using cow manure. I mean, that's just, that's fantastic. I mean, they have their own but cow set is- up up there. But can I, cow manure is valuable for fertilizer. I don't know why we'd want to use it to to burn to make energy. It's only going to drive up the cost of fertilizer and to produce food. Well, yeah, that, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Because you know more about it than I do, so I won't argue about it. <laughs> Let's just. But I just wanted to throw in my two cents, and and uh, you know, I'll let somebody else come in. And uh, you guys have a good evening. Two cents it is. Thanks for the call, Robert. 855 free It's 855-450-3733. This is why I don't want to pick winners in this fight. I believe that alternative, it has to be. What we have to do is we have to stop subsidies for oil companies. Once you stop the subsidies, then the cost of, uh, of oil goes up to its natural uh, cost and coal and all those other things. Obviously, uh, they need to burn cleaner and everything, but you should give them the opportunity to figure out how to burn cleaner. It takes a while for technology to mature. So, what do you think? 855 450 3733. It's 855 450 free here on Free Talk Live. It's 855 450 free. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. 
This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. alternative energy right now, but you can always change the topic. We certainly do that here on Free Talk Live. Um, I want to tell you how to get some cryptocurrencies, whether it's Bitcoin or Litecoin or Dogecoin or Dashcoin. Expresscoin.com makes it fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. You can just get your cryptocurrencies with a money order or a check. Um, you start off at Expresscoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. You can even do it from your smartphone. They've got an app at expresscoin.com. So use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency of choice at no fee at all. So no fee if you go to expresscoin.com. It obviously will cost whatever it costs to get the cryptocurrency, but there won't be a fee if you get under $40 worth and you use the coupon code FTL. So it's expresscoin.com. That's intended for you to uh, try it out, you know, if you've never done it before. And, you know... These uh, these cryptocurrencies, they could be headed up. I don't know. I think it's uh, it's really difficult to say. Uh, they were really sort of rocketing upward in value. Many people still believe they're going to. They've kind of languished over the last 18 months, though. So it's difficult to know. It's cool to have an alternative form of money that yeah. didn't exist like 10 years ago. It's and just kind of cool that like there's this other thing that was born. Potentially anonymous. You can use it online. It's very easy to use online, especially with so many of the uh, apps that have been created. Yeah. So I think it's great, but uh, we'll we'll see. History will tell us one way or the other. I also like about cryptocurrencies that it's just as easy to go from the dollar to Litecoin as it is to the rubles to Bitcoin. I mean, it's just as easy from any currency to slip in and out of these things. So many more places are accepting them, too, and yeah. I think that that's great as an international currency. Um, you can use Bitcoins in – I've used Bitcoins in the United States. I've used them in Belize. I've used them in Mexico. Wow. And so you can use them anywhere. Yeah. And that's really cool. Liz, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, we're just listening to you all about the renewable resources of energy and stuff. Yeah. And the other day, me and my husband are always looking into stuff, the water wheels, because we're close to a river up on our property, and we don't have an electric pole up there. Okay. So we've got a few of the solar panels. The batteries are more high dollar than the solar panels. Yeah. And you got to have a way to convert the energy. 
um, do you have, have that for every it? solar panel? Does every solar panel have to basically go from DC to AC or something like that? Uh huh. We we hook our converter up to it, and that helps us. And when we're on a road trip, uh -huh. we'll hook the solar panel up to our converter, and it's got two outlets on it. So that's a good way to charge your phone, not using the car or whatever and stuff like that. Okay. Um, can't run a crock pot on it. <laughs> right. I tried, but. The reason for my call was uh, last week sometime I was messing around on Facebook and something my sister posted something really cool. And um, it's this couple, a man and a woman, and they have created, if you haven't heard about this, you need to Google it. But it's a solar road panel. Oh, no. So this is They're amazing. On? Yes. They're not it's real. Made out of, it's awesome. When you see it, you're going to be like, wow, what movie are we in? Well, I, I saw this. This went around about a year and a half ago, I think. And... Uh, what they were made out of glass, right? No, it's some kind of a fiber, uh, plastic lock. It's a real tough material, okay. but it's got the colors in it and the chips and everything in it. Um, it and it basically, it's going to soak up. You know, the roads are just sitting there all day, yeah. eating up sunlight and getting hot yeah. and putting potholes and cracks. Well, this is going to remedy all that. What my husband said, and of course, what I thought made a good point was, are the oil companies going to let them do this? Or is the state going to let, let this happen? It's probably going to get squashed like every other good idea. It'll get squashed because it's a bad idea. This is not going to work. I mean, think about that they are glass, first of all. And once glass gets scratched, not enough sunlight is going to come through onto these solar panels to produce enough energy. So they're going to diminish over are time. Are you sure that you're talking about the same technology, Derek? Yes, Jay? solar solar roadways is what uh, she's talking about. And there's a video about it. It's huge. Everyone's talking about these solar roadways. And what I've seen is that there's not enough evidence that these things are actually going to work. So far as weight, the only thing that we've seen as far as evidence of how much weight they can support is a one-ton tractor. Well, there's a lot heavier things that are on the road, and that tractor wasn't going very fast. It wasn't trying to break on glass. And uh, yeah. so asphalt is expensive enough to repair. We do it like at least uh, once every three years, maybe once a year here in New Hampshire. Yeah, that's crazy. And... Think about the cost of replacing asphalt versus the cost of replacing chips and solar panels and glass and r shutting down the road. And uh, what about at night when uh, these things aren't generating electricity? How, how are they going to be powered then? And th they talk about, oh, they could melt snow, too. That's another one of these claims. That'd be like, awesome. yeah, oh, wouldn't that be that. great? Yeah. Well, how much energy does it take to melt ice? Lots. And to keep it melted so that it doesn't turn into ice. And uh, how do you do it when well, there's snow on top of the snow solar panels? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Once there's ice or snow on there, they're not catching any more rays. <laughs> so. It's baloney. This idea is not going to take Here's off. Here's what this – okay, so the idea is either going to take off or it's not, and it's going to be tried in private places like parking lots and uh, you know little private roadways to get to parking lots and stuff like that. That's where it needs to be tried so that we can see whether this works or not. I know that um, – it's the Netherlands or Denmark or something like that. Some one of the countries in that region is trying the the glass roadway thing that was being done uh, a couple of, that was being talked about on the internet about a year and a half ago. This is so pie in the sky. Can we please get off of the roads? If they're thousands of years old technology, we need, can we go to flying cars already? Well, we need right. We need better technology as far as roads goes because it's crazy what we have to do to spend on asphalt here in New England. It's just potholes every year. Brand new roads with potholes. After the ice storm, Steve, we're in Arkansas, and we drive to Tennessee frequently. But, I mean, after the ice storms this year and last year, snow plows um, the snow plows are not only are they plowing the snow, but they're also tearing the road up. Yeah. We hit a couple potholes and, like, popped a tire. I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous. But the cool thing I was going to say about those um, solar roadways also was that you could just take one of the panels out and replace it. So it was kind of – I understand what you're saying about cost. You have a very legitimate point, but you could just remove that panel and put another one in. It's the not only like way you have to, to find out whether it's going to work is for somebody to try it, and that's what it comes down yeah, to. We've already tried putting LEDs on in the daytime, and you can't see them, so <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Thanks for the call, Liz. Appreciate it. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. I mean, try it. You've got an LED flashlight laying around at home somewhere. Go turn it on in the middle of the day and see if you're going to be able to see a little road sign or some uh, white lines on the road or uh, traffic ahead. What kind of signs are going to be illuminated with this fictional road of the future? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's interesting. And it does. I do get how people say. These roads are just laying out there, not producing energy all day long, and they're great places for solar panels. I would agree with that. 
Um, no, they're not. <laughs> why not? Because lots of the roads are covered with trees and they're shaded and they're not soaking in sun all day. I mean, I get it. When people are using their imagination and being optimistic, they're thinking Arizona and these long stretches of roads that never get used, like roadrunner type stuff. But uh, m no, most of the U.S. is not like that. It is going to be shaded. You've got the whole time during the nighttime when these things are not going to be charged. Well, that's that true with any need solar panel. Well, that doesn't make them a good technology to be like, well, hey, uh, they're, they're out there. And what about when the roads are congested during the daytime when you've got a bunch of people on the roads? Are they soaking in sun then? I want to know what that better new road technology could be. Flying yeah. cars. Yeah, well, it's flying not cars. roads. Ditch flying the roads. Flying cars would be awesome. There's no doubt about it. But it's expensive to get heavy machinery off the ground and flying through the air. And so I don't know. It's certainly expensive to put stuff on the roads, too. You yeah, got me. What are your thoughts? 855-450-3733. It's a libertarian show. We, you know, you know that Derek J hates the roads. Deep in his heart, <laughs> deep in his heart he hates roads. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in, Creative Commons. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas 
of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This live edition of Free Talk Live, 855 free Last night at the Keen Activist Center, we had a little wine tasting, Mm-mm. and it was really great. Uh, there were uh, we had a couple of uh, a couple of wines there: Cabernet Sauvignon and a Pinot Grigio. No, it was a Pinot Noir. I'm sorry, a Pinot Noir. Excuse me. And they were really awesome. We paired them up with some cheeses and had some crackers, and it was really nice to yeah. sort of taste them. The runaway victor appeared to be the Cabernet Sauvignon. Yes, um, but uh, I happen to like the Pinot Pinot Grigio. Is I say to get Pinot Noir? I'm sorry, the Pinot Noir. Yeah, uh, apparently not Grigio enough. is white. Yeah, apparently I not a lot, not enough to say it properly, but uh, <laughs> I did. Or maybe it's still affecting me. Uh, you know, 24 hours later. But it was great. I, I just, you know, we uh, passed it around. Everybody got a little sip, and uh, it was real, really quite good. It was so tasty. I'm so crazy about those uh, Cabernet Sauvignons from Cavern- Cameron Hughes. Uh, yeah, well, we have a special going on still. This is the last day for the uh, Lot 439 cab. Um, it's a 2011 that we tried that one a couple, like a week and a half ago. Yeah. And that is a really, really fine wine, uh, mm-hmm. full-bodied, uh, goes great with red meats. Um, you're going to really enjoy it. And you can get it for 20% off. It's only available. You cannot get this wine, which is a premium high-end wine that's an overage. They call it a super high-end, um, a super high-end premium wine. It's an overage from one of these high-end uh, wine makers out there. And this is what Cameron does. He goes around the world and around uh, Napa Valley, and he buys up the overages from these high-end wines. And then he bottles them up and sells them and puts his own label on them. You know, in this case, Lot 439. And then he sells them to you at a discount. Now, you know, he's getting their extras and you don't know what their name brand is. So it's not diminishing their brand in any way. And this is what's really important about what he does. And in this case, you're able to get 20% off of his already discounted price. So let's say this is a $100 bottle of wine generally. He's selling it at $25. With our coupon code, you get it at 20. That's a big discount. So just go ahead and go to chwine.com, like so many of our listeners have. We're really doing well with these promotions. I guess we've uh, got a bunch of winos here on Free Talk Live. No problem. You're in good company. Go to chwine.com. There's a microphone in the upper left-hand corner. You click on it. You use coupon code FTL. You'll get the 20% off, and you'll get free shipping on anything on the site. So you try anything else you want to try, too. But if you use coupon code FTL, you'll get the free shipping. And that's a big deal when you're talking about uh, sending liquids. You have to get uh, the three wines because they fit in the box that way to to get the free shipping. But it's still great. Just go to chwine.com, use coupon code FTL, and save and get free shipping. Let's go to Ruben calling in from North Dakota. Ruben, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Oh, awesome. I was just sitting here listening to you guys and listening to the other gentleman about – free energy and all the hype about getting free energy off the roads. But um, here in North Dakota, I bought a home several years ago, and we've been contemplating on trying to figure out a way to put a windmill behind our residence and on the ground that we have. And I was just trying to see if you guys might have any idea where there might be some funding or grants or anything that a person might be able to utilize. I am not an expert in this area. Um, You know, I'm just a regular guy who likes the idea of getting a little extra uh, value. You know, if the wind's blowing by, you want to get some free energy off of it. I uh, lived on a sailboat for a little while, very short period of time, a week. I should... I took a vacation on a sailboat, I think is probably the proper way to say it. And we got some of our power off of the wind. You were able to run some LED lights and that sort of thing. Very small windmill on the uh, the catamaran. So if you could do something on yeah. that small a scale, you can do something on a larger scale. Um, I imagine that there are alternative energy grants, but I would have to go to the Internet uh, to, to start hunting for that if I were you, Ruben. Yeah, that's what I was saying about it, because I know that friends have gone – 
and gone completely off the grid back because I'm originally from northern Idaho. We moved that away from there years ago. But they've spent, you know, like thirty, forty thousand dollars on their homes and you know, it's gonna take twenty, twenty five years to recoup their their initial investment, you yeah. know. So well one of the things you have to I'm offset looking- that with, um, Ruben, is is that when you build out in the boonies, as so many of us like to do, um, I'm with you. You ha- often have to run electrical lines um, and those sorts of things out to your house anyway. So if you're going off the grid, you're getting the space that the place that you want to have, but you don't have to pay for the um, the electrical lines to come in too. So that's another offsetting aspect. I'm wondering how people calculate their return on investment with these things because if you're talking about 25 years, I mean, 65 grand today is not the same 65 grand as it's going to be in. Well, what's the return years. on investment on a house? Um, you really have to well, ask yourself, like a, why build a house these days, too? Yeah, I've question. talked to several people. And for me to completely go take my house completely off the grid, I'm looking at, you know, from what I've talked to and done a little bit of research on it, I'd have to almost have like a $40,000 investment. Yeah, it's going to be and tens of thousands. currently my electrical wow. bill. It's going to be tens of thousands And my electrical dollars. bill here, I've got, uh, I paid, uh, it's all averaged out throughout the year. Which I pay about one hundred and twenty-five dollars a month. Not too bad. You know, and I've got electric heat. And I've, and I've you have electric heat. And you're that. paying one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a month. Yes, it's prorated all throughout the year. But I've, I ordered special wow. six-inch wall house too, though. What's that? I've got six-inch uh, walls on my house. Yeah. So, so like, what oh, motivates you? Uh, are, are, is this just all purely financial? Like, do you benefit financially from this, or is this, is this some sort of, like, environmental justice thing going on here? Oh, no. For my home, for the one foot windmill, it's just something I would love to just sit there on my, on my back deck and look at this windmill go round and round. And watch yourself make energy. That would be cool. It. I get it completely. I would oh, dress up is, the windmill, put a mustache on it. This would be cool. It's an awesome. I'm looking at it as a hobby. I mean, just something for home. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not looking to completely get off the grid. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I see these windmills out here where they people used to use them pumping water and things like that out here, and I think it would just be awesome just to have it in my backyard. See, the building code out here would not let us put a windmill up there because I wanted one for just decoration. But even though I am like two miles out of town, but once I talked to them about making energy with it, they said they couldn't stop it because I'm going green. So I see. Very that interesting, Ruben. Appreciate but, the call. Yeah. Thanks so much. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Derek J., um, you're, you're starting in the place where people should start when they start looking at these things. Is Let's talk about the dollars and cents. Yeah, hello. I mean, does it make economic sense, or are you just shooting yourself in the foot? I mean, everyone wants to feel good and be a hero, right? And so we're told on all the commercials and PSAs, and the government comes down and tells us, you should buy windmills. You should support uh, alternative energy. Okay, that sounds great. I'm for it. I like it. But if there's some alternative available that's cheaper, there's nothing more green than saving money. So I'd prefer to stay and uh, reserve the extra value that I have, and then I can make it up to the environment in other ways. And who's to say? I, I don't necessarily buy the line that the energy I use is bad for the environment. I mean, presumably, if there are energy companies that are competing, not a monopoly, but if there are competing energy companies then they would also compete on being the cleanest because they know that this is something customers care about. Well, you know, back in the 80s, they had this whole uh, thing about uh, the dolphins and like some the, the certain nets that weren't used and that sort of thing. And then there was the oh, cheap yeah. tuna. And, um, you know, there was a... What they found is is people like the cheap stuff better than they um, really care about sort of uh, you know which which dolphins were harmed in the catching of the tuna that uh, I'm going to eat. So it can be difficult when you're talking about just competing when you're when when one company competes based on price and another one competes based on sort of the morality that they see. Uh, I do think that the the green companies can compete. I just don't think that they can compete on the same no, scale. No, I'm sorry. I, I see your analogy, but I sort of think that's an apples and oranges because with the environment, uh, like the, with the land and the the sky. Um, that's a little different from the ocean. I mean, I get that they're they're both unowned, but 
there's no one monitoring the ocean being like, well, you've taken, you've killed all these dolphins. I see them. Whereas with the rivers and contaminated water supplies, people are like, uh, I see the damage in my backyard. When you put pencil to paper on this one and you start figuring out what makes sense financially um, as far as uh, alternative energy, remember that the numbers tend to be a bit optimistic. Um, so just consider that and, and look at your payback time. I think that's really important. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's scent and alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief of the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Uses directed. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
let you know you can go and uh, you can get free archives of Free Talk Live going back for a decade. They're available at archives.freetalklive.com. They're free. The whole website's free. I know that there's many talk show hosts out there that charge you for access to certain parts of the website and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, on Free Talk Live, we try to give away as much as we possibly can for free because we want you to have that uh, that, that archive. Go, get it. Year's worth. Archives.freetalklive.com. Check us out on Facebook, too. Go like our page. It's facebook.freetalklive.com. We're uh, rising in the ranks. We were a real force on Facebook, uh, as far as I'm concerned. 855 450 free. We had recently 16 million post views in one week. Wow. It was a pretty pretty big pretty big week. Is that the number one way you measure your your Facebook strength? It, you mean the way Face, I do yeah, or the way that uh, people do? You. Um, I do and generally people do. Okay. Um, so anyway, let's go to Shane calling in from Vegas. Shane, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, I heard people talking about the solar panels, but one of the things that they weren't mentioning was hydrogen. You can buy a hydrogen generator, commercially available, about three grand, and I bought a hydrogen tank and put it in my wife's car. Cool. She doesn't buy any gas anymore. Okay. We run 100% hydrogen on it, and if she runs out, you just use the selector switch and go to regular gas. But that made Does a the significant gas get old? savings. Does the gas get old? Uh, well, we do. It can, but uh, you can buy a stabilizer, a yep. fuel stabilizer, and yep. put it in there. Yep. Well, what my wife has done is she's just run it dry because she doesn't use it anymore. She only drives around town, yeah. and she just makes sure that she tops off the tank before she leaves. So and let me it's run these more numbers than enough. Again. Let me make sure that I understand these numbers again. So there's a, you put some kind of hydrogen generator thing in your wife's car, and you have a hydrogen tank. You said something costs three grand. Which um, Run those numbers by me again. Um, sure. You take the hydrogen generator costs about three grand, and you connect it to the solar panels. It converts water and it breaks it down into hydrogen okay. and oxygen. The oxygen just gets released. You then take and pump it from your storage tank into the hydrogen tank in the trunk of the car. Okay. And then, how now, does, the, does the regular that, engine in the car produce burn hydrogen? Yep, any gas engine will. Huh. And why do you like this? Uh, well, the cost of gas at the time was four dollars a gallon yeah. for diesel, and over three dollars a gallon for um regular gas. Four so grand. Said, hey, three, if this works. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Three grand is a is a is is cheap if you can just stop using gasoline. Yeah, but you got to keep buying these right. hydrogen tanks, right? How much do they cost? No, the tank the tanks there. It's uh, the solar pa- the solar right. um, panel is producing. Go ahead, Shane. Oh, okay. Right, the tanks weren't that expensive. The the big tank that I bought that fits in a trunk. Um, was about 300 bucks. So, okay. and then I had to buy a kit, an installation kit. There's companies out there that will provide you basically a turnkey hydrogen kit. It's become a real popular thing. You can Google it, find a good one that you like, and and if you don't know how to install it, you can take it to any mechanic. They can read the instructions. It's really simple. They're just plugging in, uh, tying in the hydrogen to the injection, the fuel injection, and then there's just a simple switch that alternates back and forth. This is a really as cheap far as, method to turn over to sort of a green car. A lot of people are paying a lot of money for uh, hybrids and that sort of thing. Um, you know what's funny about that? Those They don't tell you, but that battery costs 15000 to replace. Nah, and after about seven it years... It doesn't cost that much. Um, I've got a Prius uh, plug-in, and uh, we've looked up the numbers on that, and it's it's nowhere near that. And they've dropped, okay, yeah, like eight years ago, seven years ago, they were telling me something like 15 grand. Maybe I was so. like, oh, hell with that, but, yeah. you know. But even well, so, okay. um, the the numbers that you're talking about on this uh, hydrogen tank sound a hell of a lot better than the numbers on the, uh, the Prius anyway. And it sounds a lot cleaner, like it emits oxygen. Something I never got about the Prius and those uh, battery-powered cars are, first of all, they're, they're like, what nickel lithium ion batteries and that's takes a whole lot of energy to pull out of the ground in the first place that's burning coal and and all sorts of electricity and then furthermore they're electric so where does electricity come from right now burning coal 
Yeah, but electricity generally is less costly to it's it's less costly if you if you already have a battery, right? Sure, cost is one thing, but it's not saving the environment. That's my point. Yeah, a lot of people will look at them from an environmental standpoint. That's never been the, the issue for me. The issue for me was to get off of the of gasoline because okay. I understand they kill little Arab well, kids for that stuff. Go. Right. This is better. This sounds it's good. Hydrogen. Do you know anyone else who has this? Um, I have about six friends. And I actually have another friend. I'm an over-the-road truck driver. Yeah. He, he's turned me on to it because he's been using it in his diesel truck. Get out. You can't run it 100% off oh, okay. the hydrogen. But what you can do is you add a mixture of the hydrogen into the diesel. It makes it burn faster, so you have to consume less diesel. Wow. It, it adds about one mile per gallon. And for a big rig, that's significant. Oh, for a, a big rig, I've got a F three fifty, and I'm like one mile to a gallon. I wouldn't. I, geez, yeah. I could I could drop oh, a tailgate yeah. and get that. <laughs> yeah, big rigs when they're loaded only get about six to seven miles to the gallon. Yeah, but so they, adding but they one mile to the gallon using hydrogen is huge. Even when they're not loaded, they they're not getting much better than those numbers, right? Correct. They get about eight empty, so it's not like. You know, wow. So they are not good on the yeah. Your wife's car is a gasoline engine that is running on hydrogen with yep. with very little sort of uh, just a few little add-ons to make it work properly, right? Right, just a tank and then a converter kit to run it from the tank. Uh, the trunk is where we mounted it, and it runs under along the frame up into the uh, where the fuel gets injected. It's a 2006 PT Cruiser. So, yeah, I mean, uh, besides, it, it didn't make it look any better, but it certainly made it a lot cheaper to drive. <laughs> well, I, so I had a PT Cruiser, too. It and, yeah. I yeah, had a PT so Cruiser. It was the only it, one the is, that had a uh, convertible top that had a nice big back seat for my son in, so I had a PT Cruiser at one point. I can make the jokes. Um, I think you may have changed my life well, here, Shane. Yeah. The, uh, uh, well, yeah. Uh, I want people to call in on this and talk about hydrogen, uh, you know, hydrogen conversions for cars because there's got to be a downside on this. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Can you think of a downside, Shane? Um, honestly, none. It what just kind of spoils you though because she doesn't buy any gas at all anymore. So what about a wreck? An extra couple hundred dollars she saves. Is, um, have, how, many know, wives, uh, how many wives have it, you lost in fiery balls of fury um, when they get into, rear-ended? Well, it's because it's where it's mounted in the trunk is actually between the frames, so I would say it's definitely just as safe as gas. Yeah? Huh. So, do, I mean, do you know anything about the explosiveness of this? The car used to blow up, so as far as I know, none have blown up. But, I mean, yeah, it's very flammable, so, but so is gasoline, so is diesel. Yeah. Well, so when you're talking terrible. about saving, you know, two hundred to three hundred a week, and then you three four years into it, you're like, wow. So, is this permanent, you can or can you can you remove it and move it to the next car? Say you you, you know you, you can remove to... it, and it's got four <laughs> bolts. The tank is actually on um four like little legs that are mounted to the bottom of the trunk, and so yeah, you can just unbolt it and transfer it to the next vehicle. Wow. As long as it runs on gasoline, it will run. You're a hero, Shane. Thanks so much for bringing this information to the, to the people. I, I like that you are willing to try the idea yourself and then share it with other people. Like, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people who tell me, oh, you got to use energy, you got to use uh, windmills. You gotta they don't use... do it. And then <laughs> yeah, they don't do it. They don't know what they're talking about. But then you are like, here, I tried this. It works. It's actually cost-effective. If you email me at mark at right, freetalklive.com well. some uh, links on this, uh, I will put them up on the Facebook page so other people can try it out. Sure, you broke up. Can you say it one more time? Yeah, if you email me at mark at freetalklive.com, um, I can uh, put it up on the Facebook page, and then other people can find out about it, too. Yay. Okay, I'll Thanks do so that. Thanks so much, Shane. More I'll all the links to you. All right. Thanks so much. All right, have a good one. 855 450 free. Now, there's a reason to have a solar panel. Uh, the vast majority of yeah. people are living someplace that they can toss up a solar panel, um, and if that just runs that hydrogen you know, powered thing, um, then you can, uh, the, the hydrogen generator then for three grand and three grand, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not, you know, it's not out of the reach of most Americans either. Mm. Um, and then you can basically fill up, like you said, it depends on how far you drive in a given week, but, um, you know, <laughs> it can be 
the, the fuel bill at the end of the month can be four hundred dollars. Yeah, this could also be really good for solar panels. I know he was pitching the idea of uh, hydro, or, yeah, hydrogen. Yeah. But um, this is good for solar panels too. I like solar panels, but I'm not a homeowner. I always rent, and I've never had a reason to buy solar panels. That's the landlord's job. But you could. But put a solar I panel drive, up. and I could put one on my car. Well, you could put a solar panel up um, on the wherever you're renting, and then uh, have the generator there that generates the hydrogen, and then put it into the the car. Or that. 855-450-3733. I'm excited by this. 855-450-FREE. Come teach the hosts. Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. We're making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it, but here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $227. Antiwar.com reports, though Iranian state media hasn't mentioned the fact at all, U.S. military officials claim a naval convoy of between seven and nine Iranian ships is moving somewhere in the vicinity of Yemen. Details are scant, but officials said only some of the ships may have been armed and that they might be conceivably there to get into a fight with Saudi ships at some point. There's no reason to think that's actually the case beyond Pentagon speculation, though Saudi Arabia, which is attacking Yemen right now, has made clear they won't allow allow any Iranian ships into Yemeni national waters. The U.S. speculation is probably warrantless at this point anyhow, as they previously were hysterical about two Iranian ships, one of them a destroyer, being deployed to the region on an anti-piracy operation, but those ships did exactly what they said they were doing and never picked a fight with the Saudi Navy. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports a mother and cannabis oil activist, Shona Bonda, learned last month that the state of Kansas has yet to warm up to medical cannabis. After her young son defended the use of cannabis during a drug education lesson, school counselors reportedly called state authorities that detained the child and raided Shauna's home. Bonda told investigative journalist Ben Swan, they pulled my son out of school around 1.40 in the afternoon and interrogated him. I didn't believe you could get a warrant off something a child says in school. Police obtained a warrant and searched her home, finding two ounces of cannabis flowers and an ounce of cannabis oil. The family previously lived in Colorado, where recreational use of cannabis is legal. In Colorado, she successfully used cannabis oil to treat her Crohn's disease and has since been in support for its use. The cannabis found in her home could lead to felony charges, but none have yet been filed. Her son was taken away from her. A new custody hearing is set for Monday. She told Ben Swan, My son and I did have the talk about how it's not okay to bring this up in Kansas because it's a different state than Colorado. She was explaining how she tried to keep her son from being too vocal, saying it's very confusing for a child. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Coinbase also allows you to buy and sell Bitcoin using a bank account or use their tools to accept Bitcoin as a merchant. Opening a wallet is quick and easy. And for merchants, there are no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of transactions. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports advocates for legalizing cannabis launched a petition campaign in Phoenix on Friday seeking a ballot measure that could make Arizona the fifth U.S. state to allow possession, cultivation, and consumption of small amounts of cannabis for recreational use. Supporters have until July of next year to obtain the signatures of 150,642 registered voters in the politically conservative state in order to get the initiative placed on the November 2016 ballot. Formal paperwork to kick off the drive was filed with the state on Friday. Following the lead of five other western states and the District of Columbia, the Arizona measure would legalize possession, cultivation, and private personal consumption of cannabis by adults for the sake of just getting high. Arizona is already one of 23 states plus the District of Columbia that allows cannabis for medical use. Cannabis remains classified as an illegal narcotic under federal law, although the Obama administration has taken the position of giving individual states leeway to carry out their own recreation use status. Under the Arizona proposal, adults 21 and older could ultimately purchase up to one ounce of cannabis through a state-licensed retail outlet. They would also be permitted to grow up to six plants at home without a license. Sales tax proceeds would be earmarked to cover regulation costs, public health, and education efforts. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Manatee is a solitary creature, drifting along in the warm, peaceful shallows. They are not usually held in a small glass enclosure with three other male manatees hell-bent on the violent, forced sex that I, for real, saw with my own eyes while alone one night at SeaWorld, San Diego. A distant relative of the elephant, the manatee has a prehensile upper lip which it uses to gather food. It also has a large penis. Classified as endangered, human boaters often cause serious wounds to manatees' flippers, rendering it difficult for this one poor little rescue manatee to escape a large male manatee intent on unwanted anal intercourse. One needed not to look in that little manatee victim's cold, soul-sapped eyes to know this was not the first time this had happened, nor would it be the last. This is the Onion News Network. want to talk about we've uh, been talking about teens uh, use of e-cigarettes teen smoking uh, we also spent a great deal of time talking about alternative energy found out about how to you can run your car get a conversion kit for hydropower i think hydrogen power i think it's uh, fascinating whatever you want to talk about 855 450 free you're welcome to do that Derek j 
you were telling me about an experience you had this week, um, you know, viewing a meme. That's right. I saw a meme online, and it pictured three women who were breastfeeding in a bathroom. The headline on top read, Women should not be forced to feed their babies in a bathroom. Support public breastfeeding. And then it has uh, the revolution fist and a little, like, emoji happy face. So, okay, the, the women have... Uh, the children, their their babies are, are breastfeeding, and the words above them read, table for two, bon appetit, and private dining. So obviously this meme is taking a negative view of restaurants who would ask women to breastfeed in uh, private. Now, I haven't heard of this happening. Maybe it does happen. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, there's been all kinds of uh, I've seen videos of sort of public shaming of uh, of women I'm, who are breast, breastfeeding. And- sure, I've I've seen a video of a woman who was in a gym who was asked to um, do that uh, to breastfeed outside of the gym, not inside, and um, she was very upset and made a video about it and had a lot of support from uh, other moms who like to breastfeed in public. So this got me thinking. I, I was sharing this this meme. It uh, it touched me because I don't I don't really care when I see uh, breastfeeding going on in um, public. I'm not alarmed. I'm not offended. I do think it's distasteful. Like I don't think um, like I think I put it this way. It's as bad as a bad tattoo. Like, I see someone with a <laughs> tramp stamp, and I'm like, ew, that's icky. <laughs> okay. That's all. I mean, I'm not saying I would never go up to someone and say, stop doing that, or there are children around, or whatever. It's just like, oh, you've made a bad aesthetic choice. It's like, it's like <laughs> that wearing- That child that you're hanging from your nipple, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't go with everything here. Yeah, this does not match your ensemble. It's really <laughs> clashing patterns. A lot of the times these ladies are wearing sort of baby wraps. I mean, doesn't that, uh, doesn't that sort of work into the ensemble? Yeah, if what you're wearing looks like a huge diaper, maybe, maybe this would be appropriate for you. But I, I don't think it's appropriate for a restaurant and so that's why i shared this meme um and i said above my uh, reshare on on facebook here i said how about don't bring an infant to a restaurant and this got i knew it was going to upset some people but this got a huge reaction that i could have never predicted it's still ongoing i mean the, the comments threads are still appearing but i guess my point about all this was i wanted to start a discussion about social etiquette. Everyone on my Facebook feed knows I'm an anarchist, libertarian type who would say, it's up to the business to decide. Yes, we all agree. It's up to the business, okay? I <laughs> No argument here. The owner of a business or private establishment of any kind gets to set the rules about what happens there. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, a library type of public place where the government owns it. I'm talking about restaurants where people go. And my point is, as a customer, I don't like being in restaurants that have young children in them. They cry, they smell, they throw crayons on the ground. Sometimes they take up more of the walkway with their high chair. They yell. Yeah, and um, I don't like that. As a customer, I'd prefer to be in restaurants that don't have that. And so I make that choice. I am free in this relatively free market of places to eat to choose what restaurants are likely to have adults instead of children. Um, But what do you think about this, Mark? I'm not a parent, and so I don't have the perspective that you do as a parent of a five-year-old? Seven. Seven-year-old. Yeah, Jack Jack just turned seven. Happy birthday. Yeah, he, um, yeah, I, I would say that Jack is not appropriate for certain restaurants. Now, I don't think that Jack is not appropriate for any restaurant. Uh, you have to, you know, you're going to have a, like Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going that far. But uh, I will say that there's things like family restaurants out there. Yes. You know, or maybe even diners, uh, and yeah. those places are appropriate for families to go. And in many cases, all a family can afford when you're trying to, uh, you know, pay <laughs> when you're paying for meals, a bunch of meals for people that don't have jobs. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> things get costly. Uh, taking the 
uh, taking the kids on a uh, vacation. We were, you know, talking about a friend. My wife and I were talking about a friend who has three kids, and uh, you know, them going on vacation. It must be phenomenal when they go down to uh, Mexico to take the kids on the plane ride and the hotels, extra whatever extra hotel space they must have, and you know, the costs at uh, you know dinner, the pl- per plate and stuff like that. It's prohibitive. So I would, what I would say on this one is, is that I, I would call you half right. Um, that you know, if you want a uh, restaurant that is clear of uh, families, that restaurants really should be able to say that. Look, I just think that this kid's too young to be here. Going to be quiet. Um, those sorts of things. We're going to have to ask you to leave. Those kind of things. I get it. If If a kid's being a big pain, oftentimes what my wife would do is take him out of the restaurant so that he could make whatever noise he was going to make outside of the restaurant. Right. But, um... No, that's that's good social etiquette, right? But better social etiquette, in my opinion, and I'm not trying to offend you or your wife or anyone out there, but I think it would be a better idea to not bring your child in the first place. Do we just... Do do married... uh, Do couples with children just not get to go to restaurants anymore? Is that what your claim is? Yes. Sorry. No, because you made made a choice to have a kid. That choice meant you're going to have to change some things about your lifestyle. Sure. You had to move into a bigger place, right? I don't have to change them to fit your preferences. You had to make a bigger economy. No, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying I want to have the conversation or uh, maybe start the conversation of... Maybe people ought to feel a little pressure the other way. I mean, I'm seeing a meme that's putting pressure on me to accept something that I don't really like. I think it's as as ugly as a bad tattoo, as as I put it. So why shouldn't I be able to have the freedom to give a little pushback my direction and say, no, I don't like this. Uh, I I think people are are, – they're not bad people, but they're sort of trashy if they do this. (laughs) I think that um, the different restaurants really have to make their decision here, and there's so many yeah, ways to get. Yeah, okay, a, it's to up get to the restaurant. Yes. We get that. No, no, but I think that's important. I think that's a really important distinction because, look, you can't uh, frequent every restaurant in town, and that means that other restaurants need niches, and that niche may be we want ladies to come in topless and feed their babies right here at our tables, and if that's Ugh. if that right, well, don't and and then you don't go right. I mean, that's so. They, restaurants, it's really hard to find that right restaurant, so yeah. you need that good niche. No, the other thing, and I want to preempt a caller before this goes on, if, if there's any who are thinking of dialing in and say, I support women breastfeeding, I love to look at breasts. Like, that sexualizes the act of breastfeeding, which I do not intend to do. I don't see this as disgusting because it's sexual in any sort of way, but I do think it's disgusting when men support it because they like to look at breasts. Yeah, I, I'm that always... That is demeaning to women. I like to look at breasts as much as anybody else does. Yeah, but I'm, to be like, oh, breastfeeding right. is beautiful because I get to see boobs in a restaurant, I that's not it, appropriate. Yeah, I wouldn't say it for that reason because I'm a little... I, I'm it, Although I would never say anything about uh, women doing it, I am a little uncomfortable when it happens. It's like, okay, well, this is an area where I'm not looking anymore. I'm just not looking over here. And then so I have to spend a certain amount of time sort of not looking at this particular um, situation. Now, if the woman's talking, I'm going to look her in her eyes there's no doubt about it but um you know i'm not going to spend i'm not going to look at a, a it's woman. uncomfortable could you imagine if a woman just relieved herself in front of you and i just... think that there's differences and in, in that well, what is the difference well <laughs> in one case you have a baby who is uh, feeding and has to do it on a relatively regular basis and they're okay think... but that baby didn't just pop out of thin air she made choices that produced that baby maybe there should be a um it's for some restaurants the ones that derek j goes to maybe there should be a little best breastfeeding rooms for the gals to go to that are much nicer you know a little lounging area they would be beautiful i'm sure they would be wonderful 855-450-3733 your your thoughts on breastfeeding in public derek j is a little a little miffed. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live, 855-453. This is a message for everyone suffering from acid reflux. Right now, Zimbiotics is inviting you to participate in a special nationwide giveaway of a new breakthrough that actually cures acid reflux. That's right. We're giving everyone who calls in the next 10 minutes a free full-size trial of this life-changing discovery. Just call 1-800-939-5356. If lines are busy, try again. This is an exclusive radio-only offer. 
Zimbiotics is our number one product for acid reflux, and there's nothing like it. Powered by all natural, doctor-recommended ingredients, it's scientifically designed to cure acid reflux the healthy and natural way. But you can only get a free trial by calling now. Take part in this special nationwide giveaway and see the results for yourself. If you want to cure your acid reflux, call now to participate in this special nationwide giveaway of Zimbiotics. For your free trial, call 1-800-939-5356 in the next 10 minutes. Hurry, supplies are limited. 1-800-939-5356. 1-800-939-5356. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Turning to Capitol Hill, House Republicans are considering their own version of the Violence Against Women Act. The GOP hopes their new No Punch Pretty Lady Bill will finally help the party appeal to female voters. No punch, no rape, pass law, women give big smiles at us again, big votes. Among its statutes, the bill would introduce harsher penalties for putting fists to women's face and proposes that if ladies smell nice like flowers, no smash lady. And what if pretty lady Al-Qaeda? What if she death panel? What if she Benghazi? Yes, in some cases, punch lady. In addition to increasing funding to shelters for crying ladies hurt from doing sex with bad guys, the bill also includes a clause complimenting the nation's women for losing weight. And in other headlines, Lady Gaga kidnaps Commissioner Gordon. A man who likes to move it, move it is still searching for the perfect song. And Rod Stewart is mistaken for an elderly aunt. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Well, he's got some opinions on public breastfeeding. 855 free If you've got some opinions on uh, getting gold and silver, I'd like you to check out gold.freetalklive.com. There we have a wide selection of gold and silver pieces, coins, uh, rounds, whatever, whatever floats your boat. We've got it over there at gold.freetalklive.com. Prices are kind of low on precious metals, and I suspect they'll be heading back up shortly. So it seems like a good place to put your money. 855 450 free. Check out gold.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Steve calling in from St. Louis. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yes, I uh, I had a little something to say about the breastfeeding issue. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I think um, what Derek was saying, I think I, I think it's okay. Like, if there was a, a restaurant that has, you know, open breastfeeding, I think it's okay to, yeah, maybe meet these ladies and, um, sure, look them in the eye, but, you know, you know your eyes are going to drop and check out, you know, the, you know, the good. That's okay. I think that's fine. If it's out there, I don't see any reason why people shouldn't look at it. I just generally don't. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you. Do you think, think breastfeeding okay. is is an act of exhibition? No. Nor do I, mean, I and that's why I think that staring is inappropriate. Okay. Well, staring, yeah, is inappropriate, but taking a gaze, you know, for a moment, it's going to happen. I, don't, I mean, that's I don't the reality that's of the situation. It. Yeah, well, I get sort of annoyed because I feel like there are mothers out there who kind of like that. They're like, well, I'm so, you know, not that, like, all women aren't beautiful and, yeah, we should celebrate them. But, like, there is a time and a place to celebrate a woman's body, and it's not in a restaurant. Unless she's on the plane. Well, and... <laughs> what the heck? If she just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of restaurant you're in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if she decides to do that in public, you know, I, how can you not? And, well, I Derek mean, Jay can't the, because he can't, uh, and that's really one of the problems here. Well, is he doesn't, I know. He doesn't understand the time, the time and place to appreciate a woman's body. I think <laughs> I've appreciated plenty of women's body in a restaurant. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, even in a regular situation, you know, when you're talking to a female. And you're, yeah, of course you're going to look her in the eye. But, you know, your eyes are going to wander. So would you be and more likely? to wander down to her breasts. You know, I mean, it happens. That's just, that's just a, a male reaction. And it's biological and you can't, there's nothing you can do to fight it. So I want to know this. Well, Mark and I were talking about the idea of a uh, baby breastfeeding bar where, you know, it would be sort of uh, a little side of the restaurant where it would be cushiony and nice and uh, well air conditioned or whatever. And it would be a comfortable place for women to go and privately breastfeed. But I can't see a restaurant exempting everyone. You know, why wouldn't a man be allowed to go there? Would you go to uh, this area of a, of a restaurant? I would probably walk away from that area. Interesting. Because, yeah, well, because, you know, Cause kids would are say, loud. Yeah. Huh. All right. And, yeah, I don't want to hear it. Interesting. Thanks for the call, yeah. Steve. Appreciate it. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Looks like this topic has brought the guys out. <laughs> Mark, you're in Asheville. What's on your mind? Yeah. Honestly... I'd probably have more of an issue with uh, screaming kids as far as uh, people bringing their kids to restaurants. Yeah, same here. As far as breastfeeding, though, you know, if if we weren't so uptight about it, it wouldn't be an issue in the first place. You know, it, yeah, breasts are a little too sexualized anyway, in my opinion, as far as that goes. You know, it shouldn't be a big deal is what I'm saying. Yeah, All right. It shouldn't be a big deal. Well, I don't but know. But it is a big deal to you. It it's is, as bad it is as kind a of a techie tattoo. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. I just feel like it's it's one of those things that's outside of the realm of business or government. Like no, none of the callers here are saying, "Oh, the government should stop these these people or or should uh, protect these people." It's just sort of one of these things that humans have gotten together and said, "Like, is this okay? Should I do this in front of other people?" Yeah. yeah. I think it's uh, – thanks so much call, for the call, Mark. Um, I, you know, if for instance, I'm just trying to think of this from your point of view, and uh, your point of view is certainly not politically correct. So No, I, but I'm – I, I, like if there's a guy, let's say there's a, let's say I'm sitting in a restaurant and I decide yeah. I'm going to, uh, you know, dig around in my nose and eat the bugs, right? Yeah. Um, probably not going to get kicked out of the restaurant, right? Right, right. Right, like your average restaurant, maybe a high-end restaurant. But it's not a good thing to do. It looks trashy. At, 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 I'll admit. So, I mean, this is like socially unacceptable behavior. Yes. Uh, if you're above the age of three. Uh, and, uh, you know, I 
I get where you're coming from on it, but as far as breastfeeding goes, I'd say restaurants have to definitely come up with their their policies. I do think that people have to self-police on kids and what age that they take kids to restaurant and which restaurants they take them to. So I want to throw a ringer into this conversation. Uh, what about a park? Yeah. Parks are very different from restaurants. Sure. It's a place where people do take their shirts off on yeah. occasion. And they might be more relaxed. They might even have a little bit of privacy in a park. Like if you're out on a bench with your family and you're in one sort of little group area, it would be easy for a person to just walk away or look away. Whereas at a restaurant, you're sort of seated in a fixed position. If someone's right in your field of vision, it's kind of an effort to have to turn your chair and move around and, and not look at someone, as you were mentioning before. And, and this pr uh, previous caller said he would glance um, but I, I think it's perfectly acceptable to breastfeed in a park. Socially acceptable, permissible, beautiful, all that good stuff. Let's go to Jim calling in from Des Moines. Jim, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, thank you for taking my call. Um, I think it's perfectly acceptable, too. Um, it, it's a life-giving function, and you also can't compare it to an expiratory ex function. Uh, you are excreting sure. uh, something, though. I mean, there's uh, a, a comparison in that way, right? Well, it's true, but uh, the law of identity or law of non-contradiction is an Aristotle term that applies. Uh, you know, they're completely different contextually. Uh, you know, one is one is a waste product and yep. one is a life-giving product. Yep, that's different. So uh, I, I think that they, they really can't compare them in that sense. I can see how some people can could be... Um, upset by it and is somewhat, you know, uncomfortable, but that's kind of on them. You know, it's um, it's a situation where the mother is sort of in a bind, you know, the baby needs to be fed. And, uh, you know, I could see maybe putting a room, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But then the, the status menace comes into play. And, you know, the, the, the less government that we have, the better. And, you know, when they start getting into all the special rooms and stuff, I don't it. Sorry, Jim, but that woman is not in a bind. She has all the choices in the world, and she chose to be at a restaurant with a baby. Well, and she chose to have the baby. It's not well, an accident. I disagree. Uh, no. Thanks for the call, Jim. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Come on, put Derek J. through the ringer on this one. 855-450-FREE. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99, and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation. You control what you watch when you watch it. Record your favorite shows, pause and rewind live TV, even skip the commercials. Watch local channels, too. At just $19.99, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. My TV. Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1 855 905 My TV. 1 855 905 My TV. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. 
The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. and alternative energy and Derek Jade thinking that uh, gals shouldn't be breastfeeding in public. Um, well, not public, but restaurants specifically. They shouldn't bring kids to restaurants. That was my bigger point. 855-450-3733. You can uh, take him on on that or anything else. You can check him out, actually. He's uh, he's the star there at the cam. FreeTalkLive.com. We've got cameras in the studio, and you can see what's going on. One of them's trained right on Derek J. right now. Cam.FreeTalkLive.com. Quite a... I'm not wearing any clothing. What's that that I see on you? 855 free. Let's go to Abel calling in from New Hampshire. Abel, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Abel, can you hear me now? Oh, I... Oh, I okay. I'm sorry. I was sitting there making a post... <laughs> And uh, anyway, uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, uh, Derek, I I'm sorry. You, you just have some kind of aversion to that, uh, you know, I, you're probably never going to indulge in as, as far as maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe you'll make a baby sometime. Who knows? You're, you're still young. And, uh, I, you know, understanding your... Uh, your proclivities and all that, you, you may not. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I, I had two children. They were born at home. Uh, I, I just don't feel like the women should be, uh, you know, put upon to, like, not even go out and have dinner uh, just because they're breastfeeding. And breastfeeding, I don't want there to be any, any impediment so, for children. So why don't and they so, get a sitter? They can still go out to restaurants. Just don't bring your kids. Sitters cost money. Oh, you, and you nobody understand? has money. I mean, uh, no, Derek, so you made Derek, a choice to have no, a baby, and then you can't, off of that. you can't have get the off responsibility that, to take Derek, care of it properly? No, no. That isn't, that isn't about responsibility. It's got nothing to do with responsibility. Having enough money to take care of a child is about responsibility. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, and, and the best way to do it is do it yourself. 
Sure. Not 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 off outsource it. So then don't go treat yourself to fancy restaurants. Oh bull crap. Okay, well you have to choose one. Fancy it, restaurants. No, no, or I center. don't. It, I you it, know, it, I'm I'm saying that it should be a family restaurant. It right. shouldn't it shouldn't necessarily be uh, you know, and and you know, you know, no breastfeeding mother, you know, that that has a half a brain in her body is gonna is gonna choose you know to go to the friggin' hundred dollar a night restaurant, and and there will be times when we will get a, a sitter, but I want the I want the kid to be out and about. I I don't want them to be shuffled off. I mean, I, there's a whole lot wrong with. Uh, what's going on in 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 the realm of child rearing, and one of them is outsourcing your your business with, with you know who who knows what the kid down the street might be ready to do with yours so, when. So let me ask you this, Abel. You think women should be allowed to breastfeed at restaurants and at the table? Should their husband be able to get a suckle? <laughs> oh God! Oh Christ! <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, you I this is this this is a showing an emotional side of you that I'm really surprised at. I just asked I'm, a question. You didn't answer it. No, no, it, well I I, I it, nobody's going to want to do that. What are you thinking? I'm uh, sure that's some ridiculous. onlookers are thinking about it. Uh, you know what? I, I I've never been a fan of big boobs so i you know i could care less i i guess i guess what it was was i'm i got enough from from my mother so i you know i'm all satisfied and i mean boobs are great and i, I like the way they look on a woman and see this is another biased but man I, but it, what? what are you we, talking about all the supporters we've heard from so far have been straight men well, at this who point, like boobs. All Abel's doing, like you're you're employing a tactic that's unfair, right? Like so, when Abel uh, makes his point, you run off to, oh well, then they shouldn't be able to go to fancy restaurants. You're not saying really fancy restaurants, though, Derek J. You're saying, you know, people shouldn't be kids to restaurants, and that's an entirely different uh, yeah, statement than I they do, should. I do feel that way. To uh, fancy restaurant now, Abel, and, 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 Abel's and, and, saying it should be family. They restaurants. They don't belong in family restaurants, Abel. First of all, they're not customers. Their, their parents are customers, but they happen to be bad guests. They are a lot often of loud. Places, a lot of places give free meals to kids okay, great. so that so they come out and spend money. So what do I they, get you as know, a fellow they customer? They want you to do that. They great. want you to do that. Well, good. The business gets extra money from you, the, the, the baby breastfeeder. But what about me, the, the fellow customer who has to sit and endure this? Uh, I don't get anything extra. No, you're not enduring anything. You're you're having a attitude about something that's perfectly natural and ought not to be considered enduring oh, anything. Well, if nature's the at standard, all, then period. let's relieve ourselves at the table. That's perfectly natural, right? Uh oh. This is not the same thing. Why not? This waste disposal and and feeding. I mean, you're at a, actually at a restaurant. Oh, I like and the, one and, and, and I don't listen, like the other. That's why they're listen, different. No. Well, no. The fact is, is that the mother actually eats, and the and the mother actually makes milk through her eating, and so the baby is actually being fed oh, okay. by the by uh, by the results of this. But 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 you're just you just have got this negative thing going on, and there's no reason for it. There's just no reason for it. Abel, I, I I'm going to take some other calls. I do really appreciate your thoughts, though. Thank you so much. Okay. 855 free. It's 855-450-3733. Ari in South, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Ari, you're on Free Talk Live? I am. Okay, great. What's on your mind? Um, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I can't believe that there's people that believe, you know, I shouldn't bring my daughter with me to a restaurant, that I should get a babysitter. And you That's know That's apparently what? Derek I, J. right here. So address him. It's Derek J. Yeah, I think that. Day. Um, I mean, just being honest, I don't really feel sorry for you. I mean, I'm I'm feeding my child, and it's not like I want random people to see my breast. But if my daughter is hungry, I guess maybe a better option for people like you would be not necessarily that they need to keep their child at home and not bring them to a restaurant. Maybe you should suggest that the mom may want to pump and feed their child through a bottle. Or if you have an issue with that, then I don't know. Maybe you just really hate kids. No, I don't hate kids, but I, I do hear the argument that you're making is I have a kid, uh, I'm a mother, and so uh, people should uh, put up with whatever I want to do. 
I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. It sounds like you're saying that I should... That you should put up with it? Put up with it um, because you're a mom, and that doesn't really sound like an argument to me. Not necessarily that I'm a mom, but... I like mean, why is that special? Just because you had unprotected sex once, I'm supposed to change my life? <laughs> I mean, regardless of the fact, that's, and that's so hateful for you to say that because why how do you hateful? know that? I'm not a mother that's planned. You know, not every child is, you know, unexpected. I wasn't saying it was an accident. <laughs> okay, touche. But still, I'm I'm just curious deeper down to the problem. What is it with a mother breastfeeding her child? Like, what is it? What is it? What I, is I it just think that, it's aesthetically. Yeah, that you. I think it's aesthetically tasteless. Uh, I think there's a time and a place for everything, and the time and place for breastfeeding is in a private space that is quiet, where a mother and a child can bond. And do you agree? To a certain extent, yeah, I do. I mean, I have, I don't like to see breastfeeding moms, and I have a problem with seeing areolas, but I don't know. Maybe that's a personal thing to me. Out in public, I I I feel like we have herbs. Thank you so much. 855 450 free. This has brought them out of the woodwork, man. There's so many calls up on the line here. 855 450 free. Derek J and his. His problem with areolas, apparently. You can call in at 855-450-3733. We also have uh, LRN.FM on Skype. That's our username. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking the dead swarm his home now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape look for survivor max on facebook read reviews on amazon or read chapter one at survivormax.com you're faking it you go around pretending everything's okay you're irritable you lose sleep and your mind is racing with fearful thoughts you want it to stop you just don't know what to do I'm Lucinda Bassett, founder of the Midwest Center for Stress and Anxiety. I can show you how to make it stop without abusing alcohol or taking medication. I did it, and so have hundreds of thousands of people just like you. Please call now. Call now, and we'll send you this wonderful free CD. 1-800-961-4145. 1-800-961-4145. 1-800-961-4145. By now, you may have heard a bit about bitcoins. But did you know bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected start today it's free to join free to post free to auction and free to bid at bitbit.co buy sell bid or auction everything bitcoin that's www.bidbit.co bidbit.co hey i'm ian freeman one of the hosts of free talk live I created Free Talk Live in 2002 as an alternative to traditional talk radio. I wanted a show where anyone could call in and bring up any topic without fear of being screened out. Combined with our libertarian, voluntarist viewpoints, Free Talk Live is a unique syndicated radio show heard on FM and AM radio stations, coast to coast and beyond. I moved from my birthplace of Florida to New Hampshire in 2006 as part of the Free State Project. I'm also the program director of LRN.FM, which I launched in 2009 to create a place to present the best liberty-oriented audio programs from around the globe. I perform liberty outreach of all sorts and have done civil disobedience, non-cooperation, and run for office multiple times. Much of that's covered on my blog at freekeen.com. Thank you for listening to our shows. And if you want to support our work, please visit amp.freetalklive.com and contribute just $5 a month to our effective liberty outreach. That's amp.freetalklive.com.
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. I don't know why I'm giving out that number. It doesn't look like <laughs> we're going to get through these calls anyway. we got a whole bunch of them hanging on the line. Free Talk Live does something different than other radio programs do. We, we take the issues from a from an entirely pro-freedom standpoint. Uh, Derek J., when you're saying that uh, you don't like the looks of uh, gals uh, b- breastfeeding in restaurants, you're not saying that there should be a law. You're not suggesting that for a second. Free Talk Live, we don't do that. If you like what we do on the airwaves on more than 150 radio st- stations around the country, if that delights you, then you should join our AMP program at amp.freetalklive.com. We've got some perks there. There's a AMP-only podcast that has no commercials in it and an amplifier forum on Facebook that uh, really has a lot of traffic and uh, you know lots of people can meet and talk to each other there. But mostly what you're doing is, is you're helping us to advertise, market, and promote. That's, what's, that's what AMP stands for. Advertise, market, and promote Free Talk Live so that we can get on more radio stations and uh, bring the messages farther and wider. Let's go to Doug calling in from Chicago. Doug, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, the number one thing here can be that it should be up to the property owner. You know, I mean, if you go to a fine cafe and here you have a woman uh, whipping it out, feeding her kid in the middle of the dining room, it should be up to the owner of the cafe to determine whether or not she should remain there, whether or not, you know, they should offer her a towel or maybe they should offer her to go to the bathroom. You know, in Illinois, we actually have a law here where if you're an owner, if you're a property owner or any own any kind of shop or anything, you can't tell the women not to feed their kid right there. We had a, an issue here with the gym where, you know, a health club where they offered a uh, uh, child, you drop your child off and then you go work out. And there were multiple children that were there, and a woman came in and whipped it right out and began feeding her kid right there in front of all the children. They told her, you know, maybe you need to go to the bathroom. She took issue with it. With, with it. She contacted the government. The government got involved, and you know, you don't want the government involved in it. Let me guess. They took the side of the angry mother. They did. Wow, they how did. brave and, you know, of the government the, officials. The, that can be the whole point. What about the children? What about the children that were there? Maybe their mom and dad didn't want them looking at that, you know? I mean... Yeah, but uh, they don't complain as loudly as new mothers. Right. Thanks for right. the call, I would Doug. agree with you. Appreciate it. Thank you. 855 free Just because I'm I'm just feeling sexist right now, I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, the fresh female caller here. Jane, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi there. What's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to add... Um, a comment that um, breastfeeding can be done anywhere as long as it's done discreetly and, you know, you're not exposing yourself for everybody to see, I think it's okay. Yeah, I think it's—I I would tend to agree with this as the parent in the uh, the situation here. Um, I, my wife did do some public breastfeeding, but you wouldn't be able to tell— Right, like there's no right. there's no boobage to uh, to view, and if it is, it's very very discreet. And there, but I would say that there are probably some people that are activists on this subject, and uh, that's probably what's being talked about mostly. So I tend to agree, Jane, that uh, you know, in many cases, mothers that are breastfeeding, you're not even going to be able to tell. It's just a little fabric lump on their chest. Big deal. 
Yeah, cover up with a blanket or, you know, they make special breastfeeding shawls that you can cover up with. So it's, you know, I agree with one point, you know, it is distasteful if if you're exposed, but if you're being discreet and, you know, you're, then I don't see anything wrong with it. But, hey, what are your but friends? I've seen, that. Sorry. I've seen that myself too, where, you know, I've been out to a restaurant and I've seen some women just whip it out, like they say. And, you know, I do think that's very distasteful. It's very um, inconsiderate of the people that are around you. And, and I don't understand why people do that. You what know, do you think they about don't have any... discreet breastfeeding? If I don't know what's happening, I can't see how I could have a problem with it. Right, right. And that's that's absolutely fine, I think. Jane, uh, thank you for the call. Appreciate it. 855 450 free. Let's go to Jeff calling in from Elgin. Jeff, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Well, women have been breastfeeding babies for thousands of years. And Probably even I more mean, than unless that. they're. Well, okay. So unless they're putting on a show, I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking we could kind of get over it. But, you know, just, just if they're, you know, like putting on a big show and having things too exposed and that, you know. But, I mean, they, they could be a little discreet. Um, and, and unless a woman is coming over and, you know, like actually literally bumping into a guy with her breast, which, um, I mean, I don't you know have, if you guys you have ever had that. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't had, I had to pay for it. It actually happened twice in my old job in different situations, but in any case, um, unless that's happening, you know, we, you know, I don't see why we need to hear too much about it. Thanks so much for the call, Jeff. Appreciate it. 855-450 free. Let's go to Socrates von Hayek calling in on Skype. Socrates, you're on free talk live. What's on your mind? Well, I do love the conversation about breastfeeding, but, uh, I wanted to change it before the show ended on Derek J's tickets. Uh, now, tickets? Derek, uh, on uh, parking tickets. Okay. Uh, I'm protesting them. I'm protesting a ticket that I got from a state trooper for driving a car that wasn't mine. I was sober driving a car at 3 a.m., giving them a ride at home. I got pulled over because he accused me of texting and driving when I was actually filming him. Long story short, he's he's he gave me a ticket for having driving a driving what? To miss you. Any advice? Any tips I'm going sorry. in? Uh, what did he give you a ticket for? Not driving an unregistered vehicle because the, there was Connecticut plates and it expired the week before. Oh, that's rough. Right. Uh, my, and my, it's first, not my car. My first suggestion. Well, I guess question. Do you have a dash cam? I did. Uh, my I set up my cell phone to have a uh, one-click dash cam, so that's actually what was in the car when I was recording. Okay. Well, uh, was it recording before the the pullover happened, or well, like yes. once it? Started? Yeah, because he on the highway he did this. He passed me, and he, he did this dramatic slamming on his brakes. Oh, geez. So I turned on my camera around the brand about then. All right. So I, you... it's all on, it's all on camera. Yeah. So did he just saw, he just saw some expired plates basically? Right, and he, but he didn't he didn't pull me over for that. He pulled me over because. He just said I was texting and driving, which is impossible because my phone is on the dash. Where did yeah, this but he didn't give you a ticket for that. Yeah, no, he didn't because he's like, I see that, but he's like, oh, it was suspicious, you know, and he made it up. And I, I after, you know, a little bit of argument, I was like, you know what? Uh, he would, he threatened to impound the car and, you know, tow it. And I was like, you know what? Just give me the ticket. Uh, I'll, I'll deal with this in court. Did this happen in New Hampshire? Yeah, it happened in Nashua. Oh, okay, great. Are you going to take it to court? It was a state trooper. Well, that's a yeah, state police. So you can still take it to court. Are you going to? That's not really an answer to the question. Oh, well, okay, yeah. I am taking it to court. My court date's May 6th. Oh, terrific. All right, great. I'd like to and attend was, and record it. You bet. I was hoping to have any tips going into it and in terms of uh, mindsets to talk to the prosecutor beforehand. or Oh, yeah. There's going to be a pretrial conference, as there typically is with these things, where the prosecutor, persecutor is going to sit you down and say, uh, hey, now you could be in some serious trouble for this misuse of plates charge. Uh, why don't you just plead guilty to this and we'll make it all go away or we'll uh, reduce the fine. And, but, you know, they'll play some sort of game and try and sweeten the deal for you. But, um, you know, I would take this to trial, see if you can win it. You're probably going to lose anyway, but you might be able to get a good video out of it because here in New Hampshire, you can record uh, court hearings. You can record trials uh, with almost no problem. So get some good video, speak from the heart, and I hope you win something. My advice is um, what, you know, we, you have to look at the, the costs for you. If it's going to be uh, points in your license, increased uh, 
you know, costs as far as insurance goes. You know, what are you willing to pay for your activism? Because that's essentially what this would be, taking it to trial, is this is activism. And if the the cost is too high for you, just be prepared to, to sort of make a deal. Consider when you're – now, usually my advice is when you're making a deal that uh, you never take the first offer. Well, uh-huh. I, that's true if you're dealing with the prosecutor – if you take, um, if they make an offer to you, uh, you know, don't take the first offer, but be pre- be prepared to make a deal right then, because they're not going to want to spend a lot of time on this. So whatever it is that they uh, say that uh, they're going to do for you, try to cut it in half and see what happens. No, recommend they drop it. Well, maybe they'll the, cut it in half. There's always that, uh, but uh, usually, if you're usually if you uh, like dropping it was already on the table. Usually, if you want to see things go away. Yeah, but you have to spell it out. You have to say it at the pretrial conference. It's not going to be on their mind. But you need to be right. like, hey, you should drop this. Let them consider that. Always a possibility. Fair enough. Good tips. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. the call. 8.55. For, um, I'm giving out that number again. There's no good reason for it. <laughs> Wrap it up here. So, uh, Derek J., are you convinced at, at, at all here? Do you think that uh, the family restaurants, uh, women should be able to breastfeed and that uh, maybe fancy restaurants, these things should be curbed to some extent? Do you think that if as long as somebody's discreet, it's not that big of a deal? What are your thoughts? I'll consider it. I think it's still uh, undecided. The jury is out. So how much of this is uh, warped by your or, uh, your, your homosexuality. How much of that? Hard to say. Like, you just don't have any use for boobs. That's right. Check us out in the meantime at freetalklive.com, the Facebook page. It's facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you- Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, Do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at Facebook.FreeTalkLive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. On Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 19th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.27 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $227. Antiwar.com reports, though Iranian state media hasn't mentioned the fact at all, U.S. military officials claim a naval convoy of between seven and nine Iranian ships is moving somewhere in the vicinity of Yemen. Details are scant, but officials said only some of the ships may have been armed and that they might be conceivably there to get into a fight with Saudi ships at some point. There's no reason to think that 